and an infectious smile. Kelly was the third child of Sue and Jim Moy, their only daughter. Growing up, she really was the girl next door. She was athletic and loved to play sports. And when she was... This is a special report from the WB11 News. Good morning. You are looking at a live shot right now of the World Trade Center. It is on fire. We believe a plane crashed into that center just a bit ago. I'm Lynn White sitting with Sukanya Krishnan and we're going to tell you more and more about this story as it unfolds. You can see the picture right now. This building is over 100 stories tall. We understand that a plane, a twin engine plane, either a 727 or a 737, crashed into the building. As you can see, the black smoke billowing out. This is over 100 in stories. This happened around 840. That's what we are hearing. Uh, eyewitness counts are saying that there is debris falling to the ground. Uh, as well as uh, people are evacuating on the streets. Of course, that whole area of lower Manhattan is being closed down as firefighters are called to the scene and are uh, fighting this. Of course, this is an eerie scene as we look at our Metro cam looking east, I believe, looking east down the river, and you can see the uh, black smoke uh, billowing into the crowd. A lot of uh, uncertainty right. right now as to what is happening. You can see there are choppers. I believe that could be a police helicopter that is... Oh, Ooh, wow. We just saw... Oh, my goodness. You another, are looking at another live picture right now. Oh, my goodness. Of what, what I believe was be. a plane that just hit... Another plane. This Tower does not two. look like an accident of any kind at this point. Another plane has hit Tower 2, the Twin Towers. Um, you hate to say the words, but what comes to mind right now, terrorist attack. That is what it looks like at this point. Um, this is something that you've seen on live television just unfolding. There are 110 stories in this building, many employees in this building at this hour. Uh, the first plane that went through, again, a twin engine plane is what we're being told, 727, 737. We don't know what else just crashed into the second twin tower. Uh, the area, I'm sure right now, um, is flooded with all kinds of emergency crews, people being evacuated from these buildings. Uh, haven't seen anything like this ever before develop on live television in New York. Lynn, an unbelievable sight. We saw Tower One, a plane allegedly crashing, obviously crashing into Tower One. And, and just moments ago, we saw another plane crashing into Tower Two. You can see that it is on fire yes. uh, midway both, through the building. Both you can see it's on right fire. Now. Yes. And you can see the black, amazing, I'm, I'm speechless at this moment. I think anybody watching has to be. Now we do have Melinda Murphy on the way. We're going to replay this shot for you. You can see the second plane going into Tower One right now. Look at, if you take a look, here And it that comes. looks like a twin, a large twin engine, engine plane, plane crashing, crashing right into it. An Unbelievable video right there. Speechless. Speechless, that's right. Now again, there are many people in both of these buildings. Of course, at this point, we do not know the extent of any damage. It is what you're seeing right there. We do not know how many people are left in those buildings and what the casualties might be at this point. Right now, we are not hearing any immediate word on injuries or fatalities in this disaster, which happened shortly after 9 a.m. All we know is witness accounts saying, and I'm quoting this from the AP, the plane was coming in low, and it looked like it hit at a slight angle. Um, and uh, that's that exactly what we just saw with the second plane that crashed in front of our very eyes just a few moments ago. As you can see, large holes are visible in two sides of this 110-story uh, building, one of uh, the landmark Twin Towers. Once again, we're going to go to this replay okay. where we're seeing again... Here it is. You can see the plane coming in on the right. Watch as it veers around. Veers it's around and almost intentional. That it, it An looks intentional certainly approach. intentional to those of us who are watching. Um, this, we should say, is restricted airspace. No planes are allowed in or near this area. So it would have to be, we would assume, intentional. And Lynn, we're hearing that uh, this happened. There it yes. is. That's, that's what we just saw Short happen just a few minutes ago. Shortly after 9.04, explosion rocks the second World Trade Center tower. As you can see, flames shoot so, into the sky. Massive explosion on Tower 2. Right. As firefighters try to get control of what was happening in Tower 1, you have this happening once again. And Intensity, more smoke, more danger, people obviously scrambling. Right. 
you can only imagine what's going on inside that building right now. People are scrambling to get down. We remember the last incident um, yeah. in the Twin Towers. That was in February of 1993 when a car bomb at the World Trade Center in New York City exploded, killing six people, injuring... And that was at the base. That was the at the building. base, injuring thousands, causing extensive damage. You know, uh, the FBI arrested four radical Muslims who were convicted in 1994. Um, and, and now we have this, what you see before your very eyes right here. One plane crashing just after 8 o'clock, another crashing just a few minutes ago in front of our cameras live. And we're going to show that to you one more time, and we do have Melinda Murphy on the way to this, what appears to be a tragedy, and it appears to be a terrorist act at this point from what we can see. We're going to go to the replay once again. Okay, we're going to get to that replay. Uh, but, uh, Lynn, you, you remember the World Trade Center bombing back in 1993. Absolutely. And, and as a result of that, there was a lot of... Uh, uh, caution. But caution on the ground, I might say. There, there's very little you can do to protect a building like this from the air, other than to restrict airplanes from going in and out of the area, which is the law. Well, but obviously that <laughs> was not heated today. The NYPD also... Um, stepped up ground patrol there were lots of roadblocks that were put Barriers in there was a lot around. of restricted air pr uh, air area and on the ground and once we're, again we're seeing what's happening here are we going to go to this replay here we are okay here you're seeing the second plane coming into focus right there it is rounding here it is rounding the building rounding the first tower which had been struck by a plane just about 20 minutes a half an hour before and there it hits the other tower. And that was shortly after 9.04 this morning when the explosion rocked the second World Trade Center tower. We are also hearing reports in Brooklyn because of the extensive nature of this that ash is pouring down in Brooklyn. Once again, we are back, back live. live. This is what you're seeing right now. This is the aftermath. We are. This is the chopper, Chopper 11. Melinda Murphy is up there with Chet who's taking the photographs right now. And you can see the intense billowing there. You can see the, the aftermath of what we believe are two, and we're going to say this, two possible terrorist planes attacking the World Trade Center, both towers of the World Trade Center. We do not know the extent of any injuries. We do assume that there are people inside both of those towers. This is the business hour. This is the second time that this particular building has been attacked in this city. Is Melinda from Air 11 available? We She's will not get to her in a moment. few minutes, okay. but you are seeing her pictures right now, and we'll hear her, and we'll hear her report in just a minute. It, it, what is amazing here, Lynn, is you're looking at this gaping hole. You're looking at a building that has been an icon for most of the New York City uh, skyline, if right. you can say that. And it's also been a target now, as we said. It's targeted in 1993, and it looks like it's being targeted again today at 9.09 exactly. on this Wednesday. Unbelievable. And again, one of those explosions you saw right here live. This happened just after 9 o'clock this once, morning. Once again, let's go back to the first uh, World Trade Center bombing that we knew of. That was back in February of uh, 1993. A car bomb at the World Trade Center uh, exploded, killing six people, injuring thousands causing extensive damage many of us were there on the ground oh, yeah. covering it and what an what an intense and frightening experience it was for so I mean, many new and yorkers you remember the terror on the faces of the people inside these buildings when this happened back in uh, 93 and they were crying and trying to get out of the building scrambling scrambling to get down the stairs a hundred and ten floors in this building so we can only imagine the turmoil the destruction uh, the mayhem inside that building as we speak right now. What an incredible sight you're seeing right now. You are seeing the result of two planes crashing into both towers of the World Trade Center, an apparent terrorist attack once again on this icon of a building. And this is a shot that we just saw, the wide shot of uh, Air 11 taking us down the uh, Upper West Side, down the west side of Manhattan, all the way to Lower Manhattan. You can see the huge uh, gaping holes. Um, we also saw an ominous shot of, of the Empire State Building sort of looming in the background. And uh, it's amazing. This, by the way, we've been telling you this is 110 stories. These are actually the tallest buildings in New York City, the third tallest skyscrapers in the world. And um, there's an observation deck that you can see this at uh, on the 107th floor. Obviously, that's a part of what looks to be damaged at this point. Mm. You're looking at live shots right now from Air 11. We're going to try to get to Melinda Murphy in a few minutes. She's got a bird's eye view. And you can see the flames are still yes, you pouring can. Inside out there. Inside the building. Amazing. And we do uh, apparently assume that there are people 
in that building at this hour because there was no warning. One happened at 8 o'clock, right after 8 o'clock, and the second just after 9 o'clock. Well, witnesses morning. are reporting that the two explosions were about 18 minutes apart. The second explosion came after an aircraft uh, crashed into the upper floors of one of the World Trade Center towers this morning. Uh, you know, black smoke was seen pouring as we see it pouring out right now, two gaping holes. Uh, it's right now not clear what caused the second explosion, though we did see that plane uh, coming right, in right into that tower. Yes. Uh, and that's video that you cannot... Oh. It's just unfolding before your eyes. And you know, you, you read about these things, you hear about them, but we actually saw this happen in front of us. And it, it, it's just astounding, amazing. And you're looking again, close-up shot. You can see inside the fire that is emerging from that building, from the inside of the building. Again, assuming that there are people in the building. It would be hard to evacuate with such little notice. As you can see, the tops of the Twin Towers are absolutely obscured by smoke. Obviously, a hindrance for firefighters trying to uh, get control and get access to the top floors to try and uh, uh, put this or try and get some sort of control over what's happening in the Twin Towers. Right. Thousands of pieces of what appeared to be office paper came drifting over Brooklyn about three miles from the tower, according to one witness, Lynn. Now this uh, is happening again. Now it, it, it's interesting because back in 1945, an Army Air Corps B-25, a twin-engine bomber, crashed into the 79th floor of the Empire State Building in dense fog. That apparently, obviously, an accident. This looks to be an attack. What can we say other than the fact that we saw two planes crash into both towers within what witnesses are saying 18 minutes, 18 minutes of each other, and this is restricted air territory. So. Since 1993, the NYPD, of course, has been heightening its terroristic uh, uh, combative Mode, methods and yes. how, how they've been heightened uh, ever since. But again, mostly on the ground, because if you go to the World Trade Center, you see the barricades, you see the increased police presence there. But there's little you can do when you're talking about the upper floors. Now we're going to show you once again what happened here live in front of our eyes just after 9 o'clock this morning. It's 9.13 right now. This right. was at 9.04 this morning. Second right. plane coming in to the right of your screen. It goes behind Tower 2 and watch this. Behind Tower 2 and it and collides. incredibly explodes into in Tower 1 right there. Fiery explosion, assuming there are people inside. Since 1993, once again, we're going to go back to the World Trade Center bombing uh, a car bomb at the World Trade Center, killing six people, uh, the NYPD, uh, the terrorism squad, uh, New York City police have definitely heightened their sense of security at landmark buildings throughout the city, from the World Trade Center to the Empire State Building to the UN. All of this is uh, definitely... Uh, Okay, we've got Melinda now who's live for, she's been taking these pictures. Melinda, tell us what you're looking at. Melinda, can you hear us? All right, we're going to go to Melinda in just a few minutes. Good morning, you're looking Here's at live pictures of the World Trade Center Tower 1 from Manhattan Lower District. As you can see, we have a, a very serious fire in the World Trade Center. What we understand, the information is still early and coming, but what we understand is that two separate planes have hit Tower 1. Uh, which is uh, the tower that you're seeing uh, on your picture right now. As you can see, there are flames. There is a massive fire here at this uh, Tower 1 of the World Trade Center. It's in the upper portion of the building, probably the upper quarter of the tower. Now, of course, the problem with fighting something like this is that it is, uh, you can't do an external attack. Firefighters are going to have to go on the inside of this building to actually uh, uh, fight this uh, particular fire. Uh, they're going to have to be using things like high-rise packs and standpipe packs. They're going to be setting up a command center here, and they'll be using a cascade system to refill their air bottles. Now, the air bottles only carry 30 to 45 minutes of air, so you can imagine what it's going to be like to try to attack this fire, because they're going to have to climb up this many stories to get to the actual fire, and then probably immediately have to turn around and get their air packs uh, re repacked. Uh, now, what we understand is, again, two separate planes have hit this. Uh, we don't understand why at this point, but we do know that two planes, we're not sure what size planes they were, but we think they were substantial in size, have hit 
the World Trade Center. This, again, is Tower 1. Uh, we do not know exactly what happened as far as to why they have hit this, but you can see that there is a big plume of smoke which is towering into the air. I would say it goes back a couple of miles at this point, even further. You can certainly see it from almost anywhere in this area. Uh, both towers have smoke coming out of them, so it is possible at this point that Tower 2 is also on fire. It's hard for us to tell at this vantage point. As you can well imagine, police are keeping us at distance from this so that they can do the work they need to do. What we recommend to you people who are watching this from Lower Manhattan is to please turn off your water. Do not use any water that you do not need. Do not use your dishwasher. Do not use your washing machine. Firefighters need all the water pressure they can gather at this point. It's also a very good idea to stay out of lower Manhattan. Firefighters and other emergency equipment are trying to make it their way there right now. And uh, as you can imagine, this has probably already been made an all-hands emergency. That basically means that everybody, even if people are off of work right now, they have been called in to battle this blaze. Again, for those of you who are just joining us, you are looking at live pictures of the World Trade Center. That is Tower 1 on your screen right now. Two separate planes have hit the World Trade Center. We are not certain why that has happened, but it has happened. You can see the flames uh, through the smoke there, and there is a very dark, nauseous fume coming out of that. Uh, we can almost smell it from where we are, which is several miles away at this point. You can also see uh, the plume of smoke from many, many miles away. Now, again, as we said, it's going to be very hard and very difficult to battle this blaze because it is in the upper portion of this tower. Tower 2 also has smoke coming out of it, and we, again, are not sure exactly what that is about. Uh, we'll, again, try to keep you up to date with this as we get more information, but what we do know is that two separate planes have hit the World Trade Centers. Uh, we do have firefighters on the scene. They are going to have to do an internal battle of this blaze. They cannot do anything from the external because it's so high. It makes it very difficult to vent a fire like this as well. It also makes it difficult to battle it because they're going to have to use high-rise packs, and they're also going to have to use bottles, uh, air bottles, and the air bottles only carried a 30 to 45-minute supply, then they have to go back to the cascade system to refill, so they're going to have to be bringing bottles up as they fight and as they battle this uh, throughout the morning. So uh, it will take some time to get this cleared. There will be obviously a lot of traffic in and around downtown Manhattan. It's a very good idea to stay out of the downtown area. Please do not use your water unless you have to. Firefighters need all the water that they can garner at this point. And again, as you can see, this is still an ongoing battle. I mean, we have major flame inside this building. You can imagine the heat of this. And of course, the World Trade Center is no stranger to uh, fire and to other problems. There was the World Trade Center bombing several years ago. Uh, firefighters do know the, the layout of this building, but it has been several years since this happened. So it, uh, again, there will be some new firefighters on the scene of this. Uh, as you also remember, there was a B-52 which hit the Empire, I'm sorry, B-25, correct that, B-25, which hit the Empire State Building uh, many years ago after the war. And so uh, this is the second building in Manhattan to have been hit by a plane. Again, we're not sure if both planes or one plane was hit. It looks like uh, perhaps both fire towers are on fire. We're not sure exactly what happened here. But again, uh, there are two separate planes have hit the World Trade Centers. There is a major fire battling right now. Firefighters are in there for a major fight. The stairwells, of course, are how people are going to be evacuated. People will be evacuated out of these buildings. Do not, if you are watching this from the World Trade Center, do not get on an elevator. It is not a good idea to use an elevator in the middle of a fire. Obviously, uh, the, the water and other fire can short out the equipment, so you will have to walk down. The World Trade Centers, of course, are among the tallest buildings in the world making this an even more complicated fire to battle. Fortunately, the good thing that we can say is that the firefighters in Manhattan are very, very talented when it comes to fighting high-rise fires. This is what they do best. They've been trained for it and trained for it and trained for it, and today is the day they're going to have to use that training. Uh, again, for you who are just joining us, we are showing you live pictures of the World Trade Centers. As you can see, they are on fire. Both towers, the tower on the left is Tower 1, the tower on your right is Tower 2. We understand that two separate planes have hit the World Trade Centers. We are not sure if, they, uh, if there was some kind of technical malfunction, if this was some type of other attack. We're not exactly sure what happened yet. We do know two separate planes. We feel that they are fairly substantial in size from initial reports. We do not know exactly what they were. But again, both towers are on fire. Tower 1 obviously suffering the biggest fire from what we can see at our vantage point. We are not able to move to a different point simply because the police have asked us to stay back so they can do the work that they need to do in this general area. They are setting up a general command center, or at least you would be expected for them to be able to do that, uh, to be able to set up a general uh, command center. 
Now then, um, high-rise packs are being used here. We have a cascade system, uh, which is used to refill the air bottles. Air bottles carry to 30 to 45 minutes worth of air, as we just mentioned, and uh, that's how they're going to have to use this because these fumes are very noxious. If you're uh, somebody, again, watching from the World Trade Center, it's a good idea if you're in the middle of this fire to be sure and fill your door before you actually open it. If, there, if it is hot, it is better to leave the door closed than it is to open it and let the flame in. Also, it's better to hit the floor and not stand up. The smoke rises, and the smoke, of course, will go to the ceiling uh, if you are watching this from the World Trade Center. Uh, again, use the stairwell. Do not use the elevators. That is the worst thing that you can do. For those of you who are not in the World Trade Center and watching this down in lower Manhattan, please turn off your water. Do not use any water you do not need. They will need all the water pressure they can possibly garner at this point. Uh, this is a tough place to battle. Uh, obviously, if a jetliner hits or any type of plane hits an Empire State, a uh, World Trade Center like this, there's going to be a lot of fuel on board, possibly. That fuel is very difficult to uh, put out and of course all the other stuff inside the building itself which is going to give quite a bit of fuel to this fire. Firefighters uh, will probably issue an all hands call, that means everybody who is available including those who are off for the day will be called in to battle this blaze. Uh, that is the highest of all alarms, higher than a general alarm and that means firefighters from all over the area will be called to battle the blaze. Again, it will be an internal attack. They cannot do anything externally because of the height of this. It's the top portion of the World Trade Center, the very top portion of the World Trade Center. We have a baby, oh, I would say it's probably the top fifth of the World Trade Center, Tower 1, and maybe the, the top half of World Trade Center 2. Again, we're not sure if both or one of the towers was hit by a plane, but we do know two separate planes hit the towers and that that has resulted in this battle of uh, the blaze that we are watching right now. We do see flames in Tower 1. You can see it at the base of the smoke on the left, and we do know that there's some very serious fire which they're having to battle here today. Okay, that Again, was Melinda Murphy. Going... You've been listening to Melinda Murphy live from Chopper 11. Over what you can see is a, a, a raging fire. Two planes. Now, we just got this in. A senior government official speaking on condition anonymity said that the FBI is now pursuing reports that one or both of the planes that crashed into the two towers of the World Trade Center were hijacked and the crashes may have been the result of a suicide mission and we should stress that these are preliminary reports but the quote is from the FBI it certainly does not look like an accident now we the New York believe, yes. yeah uh, here's the plane we're going to replay it this is the second plane that crashed into uh, Tower 1. This happened just after 9 o'clock this morning. The first plane crashed in 18 minutes before. Again, the FBI now reporting that the, there were planes, maybe one or more hijacked. The crashes may have been the result of a suicide mission. All right, we're going to go to a witness uh, that's on the ground. His name is uh, Jeremy Fox. Uh, Jeremy, can you tell us what you know, what you've seen since 9 o'clock this morning? Jeremy, you're you're on live. Hello? Jeremy, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, this is Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. I'm sorry, Nicholas. You're on live. Uh, WB11 Morning News. Can you just tell us what you are seeing and witnessing, and where are you? Uh, I'm in my house right now. I'm looking out the window after the first explosion. I was just looking at the first tower, and I was just like, wow. You know, I was staring at it for a few minutes, and then I seen the second airplane. It was kind of close up to the building, and it looked like it really did know which way it wanted to go, and it crashed into the second twin tower building caused a massive explosion and I was just like it was just completely stunning I'm still hearing like little explosions all around like around my block but I don't know what's really going on but it was definitely a second airplane what kind of explosions are you hearing do you know um just little like little like dooms I don't know maybe that could be like results from the building but right Nicholas can you just tell us exactly where you're located obviously you're not in where are you in the vicinity of the World Trade Center Oh, well, I'm in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Lower East Side of Manhattan, and you heard this. You, did you hear the plane flying low? Did you? Can you tell us? Well, no, not really. After the first boom, I just heard the explosion. All right. I didn't really think nothing of it, and then I just went to the window and I just saw the plane coming, you know, towards the building. Nicholas, what's the reaction in your neighborhood? You're right there. You're very close to it. What are people saying? What are their reactions? Well, a lot of people on the ground don't even seem to notice because I don't know. I guess the buildings are hindering their view. Yes. But. Um, I, I guess from the result in the hallway, I heard a lot of doors slamming and a lot of people were, were speaking in Spanish and, you know, screaming and everything. So I don't exactly know if everybody is, is informed. Right now the channel is like 
Channel 11 isn't working on my TV, or none of the other channels are working, as a matter of fact. And that's because a lot of the transmitters are off uh, the World Trade Center, yeah. and, and that's part of the problem. The communication. Uh, but the communication, yeah. I see a lot of people on the roof, like, looking at it now. A yeah. lot of people going to the roof. Can you, can you explain to us, when you saw that second plane come in, did you get a good look at it? Can you describe to us what the plane looked at like? Well, I was in the Air Force before, but, so I don't really exactly know what type of plane it was, but I know it was a black plane. It looked like a fighter jet. It, it looked going, like a fighter jet? It looked like a fighter jet. I'm not exactly sure. Um, okay. It was traveling extremely fast, so it definitely looked like it, it knew where it was going. It didn't look like it blew a thruster. It didn't look like you know something happened, like a malfunction. It definitely looked like it knew where it wanted to go. How large was that plane? Could you tell? Wow, it was, it was maybe... Wow, it was pretty big. And looking, looking from my window, it's a pretty good distance. It's probably a good 30 miles away from the Twin Towers. What went through your mind when you saw this going on? I, I, nothing. You know, it was just like, wow. I, I can't believe I'm actually seeing this in New York City, you know. But for this to actually happen, and it's still smoking. Right. Now, we're showing you, as we talk to you, Nicholas, we're showing a shot now of the second plane circling around. And as we see it, we, it actually goes around the back of our view and seems to go through, through the building. The building. Yeah. It actually goes through the building, and you can see the second attack on the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. Can you describe that second explosion? Because when we were watching it, it was absolutely breathtaking. Did you hear a oh, boom? Def definitely. I heard, I heard a loud explosion. I seen the building crash in, and all I seen was like a, a, a big mushroom cloud of fire and debris just and smoke just totally rise up, and it was just like in levels. You see the windows explode, going down one by one, kind of, and it, it was just kind of like amazing in a way. But it, it's very shocking to see. I mean, you don't you don't expect this kind of thing to happen every day in the Lower East Side. Absolutely not. Nowhere in New York or even in this country. We're, I don't think we we're slow moing this. This is a slow mo shot of the second plane to hit. Tower one of the World Trade Center. I was watching news earlier about the um, spy plane yeah. that crashed. Do you think that's maybe has something to do with this? Maybe they're tied together. It's it's it's, it's unclear right now, but we slow mo this and it did look like an it went an, through yes, or partially through. through. Right. All, All right, right we're going to go to oh we have another caller right now. Um, well, actually, you know, stay you. with us for a minute, Nicholas. Can you stay with us for one more minute? Sure, definitely. All right. What are you seeing now in the aftermath from from your view? Well, from my view, the smoke is going left of my window. Um, a lot of people, a lot more people, are on the roofs than before. Um, I'm just seeing. Well, from my window, I could I could see little chunks of debris coming down. Um, I'm, I'm just seeing chaos. It's just unbelievable. All right, Nicholas. Thank you so much. Uh, you're very welcome. All right, uh, Lynn, we're going to go to Pat Kelly with the Office of Emergency Management in Westchester. Pat? Yes. Uh, can you tell us wh wh what is going on? What is the very l latest that you're hearing, sir? Uh, what we're doing in Westchester is we're mobilizing in Westchester because we're assuming we're going to be backfilling and, and assisting in New York City. So we're preparing all of our fire, EMS, and emergency management people. We're opening our EOC and a county executive staying on top of uh, what we may be doing to assist uh, New York uh, with this tragedy. Mm -hmm. We know that you work in situations like this. What's the first thing that you tell people? situations like this, so as much as you prepare, you can never prepare for something like this. I know the fire, the EMS, the emergency management people prepare for fires in large buildings, but something of this magnitude and something of this quick and over such a large area, there's no real way to prepare. You just drop back onto what you've trained for. You go and you try to assist the people as best you can, and they're going to use up their resources real quickly. New York City's got a lot of resources, but uh, an incident like this is going to tax it to the maximum, so they're going to be a wanting assistance from most everyone they can, can. So that's why we in Westchester, uh, the county executive has ordered us to take and uh, be prepared to go down and assist them. All right, Pat, this is a huge building. We're talking about a building 101 stories, uh, 110 stories. 110 Lynn. stories high. Tell us what you think could be going on at this moment inside that building, what you think the situation is like since you deal with emergencies like this. Yes, having worked in the fire service for 26 years and dealing with tall buildings, uh, the at best it's chaos uh, people uh, that are on the fire floors above the fire floors are trying to get out people are trying to get down fire departments are trying to get up to to assist the people getting out and to mitigate the problem yet yet again I'm sure in the back of their mind they're thinking okay is this the first wave of something that's going on but they're going to go in and, and try to put the fire or at least 
save the, as many people as they can and then work on this. This is going to be a process that's going to go on for days. Uh, buildings like this that have been on fire, they'll go on for days before they even get to getting them out. The biggest thing now is, is um, life safety and getting people out of that building that they can at the moment. All right. All right. Thank you, Patrick. We're going to change now, switch gears. We're going to go to President Bush, who has a statement at this moment. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. All right, the president taking a moment of silence, obviously. Obviously taking a moment of silence. He was in Sarasota, Florida. That's President Bush. He was reading to children in a classroom uh, around 9.05 when his chief of staff, Andrew Card, whispered into his ear. Uh, apparently the president uh, paused for a moment, was obviously very stunned. Yeah, they say uh, he was visibly shaken by it and said that he would talk about it later. I'm sure he's got to be uh, prepped as to what happened. Uh, all of us uh, just stunned by what happened uh, just after 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center apparently under attack by uh, two airplanes. Just to give you some background on the World Trade Center, the World Trade Center is uh, a large complex of five buildings consisting of two 110-story uh, uh, towers. Now, uh, there are two 10-story buildings on the concourse, the towers and the concourse uh, were completed in 1973. Each tower is 1,350 feet tall. It is second in height only to the Chicago Sears Tower. We're talking about people who work in the building. Just to give you some idea, uh, the World Trade Center complex has 240 That's elevators, right. Lynn. That's right. Uh, 48 other elevators that are just for the control room. And of course, what Melinda was saying, uh, if you are in the building, you know, uh, firefighters urge people to use the stairwell. Uh, not the elevators, do not uh, get open to the, the ground, exactly. do not open the windows. It causes a funnel effect uh, that just circulates the smoke into the building, uh, making it just uh, a tougher fight uh, to get out. And that's what it is right now. It is a fight to get out of this building Absolutely. for a lot of people. You can only imagine, imagine the panic inside that building at this moment. Now we're going to take you back. This is a picture once again of the second plane that just crashed through the first tower of the World Trade Center. We're going to replay that for you. Here it is, the plane coming into the right of your screen. And it flies apparently through the back of the building and crashes all the way through. You're about to see it now. There it goes. And you can see it come out on the other side, at least the flames coming out on the other side. In Washington, officials say the FBI was investigating reports of a plane hijacking before the crash. There were no immediate word on injuries or fatalities in the twin disaster, which happened shortly before 9 uh, this morning. Then around 9.18, uh, the second uh, tower uh, was struck by bombers. Uh, so uh, obviously, uh, according to Nicholas, one of the witnesses that we spoke to on the phone, it was loud. It came in low. Uh, after it hit, uh, there was lots of debris that was uh, falling on the right. ground. And you, there again, right. you're watching the plane. And also, we just saw President Bush speaking. He called it, quote, an apparent terrorist attack on our country. And you're looking at that attack unfold before your very eyes. You know, Lynn, we saw this happen back in 1993. And, uh, and a lot of people who saw it happen for the first time, a lot of people who experienced it, never thought it would happen again. Never. We prepare for these things. We prepare uh, for New York City, which uh, to many is, is the center of the UN, for one. Right. Uh, we've got the Empire State Building. We've got the World Trade Center. We've got so many landmark buildings that are um, so pivotal to the United States. We have the Statue of Liberty. Uh, Liberty Island is just uh, across the river there. But and this houses many government offices, and it also is a communication center. Many people broadcast from the World Trade Center. Um, so this, this serves a point to a terrorist who would try to make a point, I would assume. This, again, the second uh, apparent terrorist attack on the World Trade Center, the other one we've been talking about back in uh, 1993. Um, that was a shock to the world. This uh, even more incredible. And you're looking now at pictures of those who were convicted in that attack. Okay, we're going to go to Harvey Kushner, who's a terrorism expert. Uh, Harvey, can you can you talk to us about uh, what's going on? Obviously, President Bush coming out and saying uh, that, uh, and the FBI saying that they do believe that this is some sort of terrorist attack. Well, you know, oh, when you have something as serious as this. People sometimes like to uh, reserve judgment, but 
they must have some type of information which leads them to believe that this is in fact uh, not an accident but uh, you know an act of uh, terrorism because uh, considering if you look out your windows in the studio if you can look how clear it is uh, look at the trade towers one plane possibly going off track but not two yes. so it seems from the scenario that people have witnessed and uh, from you know probably intelligence the gathering sources that this is a you know viable possibility dr kushner you were involved in the uh, first attack you you worked on, <laughs> I was not involved in you attack. worked on probably the aftermath of it uh, who was responsible tell us what you what you did do in that I, I was involved really in a civil litigation against the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey for not doing the due diligence on the ground protecting uh, the B2 level uh, in the trade towers allowing a car a truck in this case to park with explosives but but this scenario which is unfolding before our eyes here you know is, is something that I couldn't even have written uh, nobody would have thought that this would have been possible that if in fact if, if in fact it is a terrorist attack that that somebody would be able to take a plane uh, supposedly one a jet and the other a smaller plane all right uh, we hate to cut you off sure. dr kushner but uh we do, stay on the line if you will we understand okay. there is another plane heading for the world trade center and there is a report that they may attempt to shoot it down gotcha continue to watch stay on the line tell us what your thoughts are right now got it uh, Dr. Kushner, we also want to tell you all bridges and tunnels obviously closed at this point. Right. Uh, obviously, this is a preemptive strike uh, to secure what they can secure uh, for, the, for the police department, the terrorism squad. Uh, the Office of Emergency Management, what do they do in situations like this when it, well, it is absolute chaos? Well, the, the, we, we, we played tabletop exercises. We painted scenarios. We went through scenarios of these types of events happening with a biological weapon. But, I, you know, I know of none that has taken really seriously the possibility of uh, attack by aircraft in New York City. This was something that ha never was ruled out. But, uh, you know, to be prepared for such a monumental occurrence is, is, is very difficult. Now, I could assure the people they shouldn't panic, those who are listening and, and, and heard the report, that uh, if anybody is prepared for this type of a, um, a tragedy, New York City is indeed. And certainly, uh, I would imagine, as we speak, the federal authorities, including you know, the, the Air Force, the Army, are, are ready. And if, in fact, another plane is within the area of New York City, they're going to make a decision and to take the plane out. Are you as stunned as most of us watching this at this point? Well, you know, I, I'm, yes, I am, because I could tell you, you know, I've dabbled in the past with the thoughts of writing my memoirs or doing a um, novel, and I couldn't have come up with a, a doomsday scenario like this one. I mean, this is just off the page in terms of the planning that, that went into this and, and just the, the nerve that somebody would have the temerity to take on the United States at the heart of the symbol of the United States is, is beyond belief. You know, we've heard from time to time uh, significant threats uh, issued. Uh, just uh, the other day, the United States, the State Department issued uh, a threat that um, uh, Americans in uh, Japan uh, be aware of the possibility of an attack. But, you know, um, nobody, I don't think anybody in the American government thought that, it, in fact, something like this could happen and would happen in New York City. And you you know, we're looking at these pictures and they're just amazing, but we're forgetting that there are probably people in these buildings, uh, ab innocent absolutely. victims. Uh, absolutely. When you think in terms of, of the emergency services that are going to have to Maybe deal with uh, people at the level, you know, in terms of the trade tower, it, it, it's monumental. Then on top of that, you know, this is going to have a psychological effect on people living in New York City that is going to be beyond belief. You know, you're going to think of the, the shock that people who witness this uh, firsthand will live in the area uh, uh, in, the, in the upcoming days. Uh, no matter how this turns out, if it turns out to be an act of terrorism, even worse. But even if it turns out to be an accident, the psyche of New Yorkers after uh, September 11th, it'll never, ever be the same. And it's going to be very difficult to recover um, you know, normalcy after an event such as this. It, it, it's just, it goes beyond what we, in, you know, those of us who report in the media and yourself have seen or could conjure up. It, it's just, it, 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 it's, you want to pinch yourself and say, is this, 
is this really happening? Right, Dr. Kushner, you said that you did have interaction with some of the victims of the last bombing, the families thereof, right. uh, at the World Trade Center. What can you tell us? What do they go through? What, what did they experience at that time that some of the people today might be experiencing? Well, they went through post-traumatic shock syndrome. I mean, uh, these people literally were at ground zero at the B2 level, and it just absolutely wrecked their lives. They, they were never the same after. It, it caused not only physical problems, but certainly mental problems, sleepless patterns, uh, waking up in the middle of the night, uh, revisiting what occurred. I, I was... Um, talking to a police officer at a Port Authority who was just catapulted across his office during the bombing. Uh, he was left physically damaged for life, but, but the, scar, the psychological scars were just traumatic. I, I knew many people who worked in the trade towers who wouldn't go back in the building, uh, who wouldn't go back into tall buildings after that. So you could imagine uh, now with this that not only do you have an attack the vulnerability from underground, which everybody understood, mm -hmm. you could park a car. Mm -hmm. But right. now something falling out of the ear, yeah. you know, th this, is, this is just off the map. Dr. Okay. Kushner, uh, the AP is now reporting that uh, the first plane uh, may have been hijacked mm -hmm. uh, after takeoff from Boston. Uh, it's 942 for those of you who are, are joining us now and looking at this eerie and ominous sight of the two towers of the World Trade Center engulfed in smoke, uh, black smoke billowing. Uh, this, is, this is not a joke. This is, uh, a this is, this is very real, what's happening here. Um, where do we go from this point? Uh, how, 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 do, how do we recoup? I, I think, you know, people, all of us stunned, shocked, and especially the latest information that just came over that Sukanya was telling you that apparently the first plane to hit the first tower was actually apparently uh, hijacked. hijacked from Boston. And uh, Dr. Krishna, I don't know if you saw that video uh, of I this. Did, see the video did you see the video of the yes, second? I did. I did. Obviously flying low, obviously a big sized plane that hit into the second tower. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, sir, uh, does this look intentional? Yes, it, it, you know, I, I have to say this without, you know, fanning the flames of hysteria. Uh, as I said to, to people this morning, uh, if you look outside, it's a clear day. You can see forever. Uh, those twin towers are just monumental. There's nothing of size near them. Uh, for, for a pilot to be that off in the airspace and to go into one of the towers the way that plane did and the second one has to indicate to me that it was more than just, uh, you know, an error or an accident. Well, the president actually uh, was before our screens just a, a short time ago and he said quote this is an apparent terrorist attack on mm -hmm. our country so. well you know whenever you have a plane tragedy certainly like tw800 or others immediately you know your federal authorities your intelligence gathering authorities go to work instantaneously to try to, to deal with the situation yeah, yeah. And, and certainly for the president to come out and say that as quickly as he did um, indicates to me that they have some reason to believe that this couldn't have happened statistically by by chance, that this was uh, a purposeful event. Dr. Kushner, we don't want to uh, disturb you, but we, we just got unconfirmed reports mm -hmm. that there is a bomb at the Pentagon and that a plane, unconfirmed reports, that a plane has hit the Pentagon as well, sir. It, in it, all respects... Is that uh, unconfirmed? This reports? is unconfirmed reports. The AP at this is time. reporting. The AP is well, reporting you, this you know, I hate to say this on the air because I, I'm, you know, I'll be part of it. But whenever you have a tragedy such as this, and especially one as monumental as this, you're going to get a lot of kooks out there, a lot of people who themselves are going to phone in all sorts of crazy stories. Uh, let's just hope and pray, really, that uh, this is not true, that it's unconfirmed, and it's just a rumor. Okay. But, but, you know, that would open us up to a war on various different fronts, and that might cause, you know, uh, a monumental response on part of um, this country. Of course, it's, it's smart to err on the side of caution, but uh, if this report were to be true, the AP again reporting mm -hmm. that uh, there was a bomb at the Pentagon and a plane has crashed into it, sir, how what would you be your reaction to that? My reaction would be that we were, we're, we're, it's an open war. I mean, you know, literally uh, terrorists do these types of things and they have the capabilities of doing them. But uh, consider the targets, consider uh, what's at stake. Uh, this would be something that uh, the United States in modern times 
hasn't been visited with. All right, we just got another word in that the west wing of the White House has been evacuated we, and that the airports, local airports, have been closed, along yeah. with bridges and tunnels and, of right. course, the New York Stock Exchange. Right. Uh, basically, lower Manhattan is... Right. Uh, is being uh, evacuated right. at this point, especially the area surrounding the right. World Trade Center. I would imagine that our airports going to be closed for the next couple of days. Can, can you talk yeah. to us? How yeah. soon after the 1993 World Trade Center mm -hmm. bombing did someone um, take responsibility? They didn't take responsibility. You see, that that that's the misnomer. Oklahoma City, nobody took responsibility. Uh, and even the embassy bombings, no one took responsibility. In the trade, in, in the so-called lexicon of the terrorists today, we talk about let the target speak for itself, okay? Now, when you're talking in terms of the World Trade Center, that target has already talked. All right. It's Dr. Kushner, again, yeah. we hate to cut you off right sure. now. We're going to come back to you. Just stay on the line. Okay. We're going to move into Washington right now. We've been telling you there have been reports about the Pentagon, a bomb at the Pentagon, plane crashing there. Sonia Deinst is live for us right now. What can you tell us, Sonia? Well, this story just keeps getting more unbelievable by the moment. We do have a live picture, I believe, of the Pentagon. It has been evacuated. We're hearing reports that there is either an explosion at the Pentagon or that a plane crashed into the Pentagon. Also, the White House has been evacuated and the old executive office building next door. I do not believe those buildings have been affected by any sort of uh, explosion or crash, but as a precaution, those two buildings have been evacuated as well. And in addition, if you're seeing the Pentagon right now, there is a, a fire there. Here in Washington, we are waiting for a briefing uh, by the FAA concerning the plane crashes at the Twin Towers building and also the, the Pentagon episode. We're also, we also understand that the FBI is looking into the Twin Towers uh, plane crashes, possible uh, hijacking there. We are also waiting for President Bush. He is expected to return to Washington. He was in Sarasota, Florida this morning uh, reading to a bunch of school children. At one point, a, an aide leaned over, whispered something in his ear. He became very somber and said he would have a, a statement in a few moments. We do have that statement by President Bush uh, for you right now, and here's what he said. Today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Okay, again, that was President Bush in Sarasota, Florida, about 30 minutes ago. He is headed back to Washington. And just to recap, we've got about three uh, events going on right here in the Washington area. At the Pentagon, an explosion or possibly a plane crash there. There's a fire going on. The Pentagon has been evacuated. The White House has been evacuated. And apparently the old executive office building, which is uh, right next door to the White House, that building also has been evacuated. We are about two blocks from uh, the White House and the OEOB. We're hearing sirens here, not seeing any, any smoke or any kind of general chaos, uh, but you can certainly tell something's going on here in downtown Washington. Back to you. Before, uh what was happening in the Pentagon. How soon after, my question is, how soon after what happened at the World Trade Center did something happen in the Washington, D.C. area? Can you give us some sort of time frame? Uh, I'm going to estimate about 30 minutes after that second plane crashed into the Twin Towers building that we started getting reports that there was a fire at the Pentagon. The Pentagon story has, has just started developing, so we're still getting details on what exactly happened there, but we do know that the, that fire is still going on, uh, roughly, again, maybe, maybe a 30-minute time period between what happened in New York and what happened here. All right, Sonia, you are on the streets right now of Washington. What is the mood like there? Well, maybe my cameraman can pan over. We're starting to hear a lot of sirens. We're starting to see people uh, down the street from us standing outside an office building. We're not sure why. We're not sure if that building has been evacuated. But 
the uh, level of energy is certainly starting to pick up here as we're hearing reports again of these uh, buildings being evacuated in the downtown area. All right. Any other buildings that you know of being evacuated right now other than government buildings? At this point, just the White House, the old executive office building, those are precautionary measures, and then again, the Pentagon. All right, thank you so much. We'll check in with you a little bit sure. later. An associate, Associated Press reporter says the tail end of a large airliner plunged into the building. He says the smoke was billy, billowing out of the Pentagon. And we just want to reiterate that the AP was reporting earlier that there was a plane that was hijacked from Boston Airport, I'm presuming it's Logan Airport up there, that was the first plane to crash into the first tower of the World Trade Center, and that happened after 8 o'clock. 18 minutes later, a second plane came in to the first tower of the World Trade Center from behind, crashing through it. We can only imagine how many people were in the building at the time. No word on any casualties at this point. Um, we haven't even begun to see the reaction uh, from the ground. You're looking at what's happened. Uh, again, an apparent terrorist attack, and that is what the president at this point is calling it on our country. Lynn, as a result, all aircrafts nationwide as well have been uh, called off. All aircrafts, no takeoffs or landings nationwide at all airports. Uh, all bridges and tunnels are closed. This is a live shot of Washington. Of, of Washington. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a tape, a tape of uh, Washington uh, reports of... Uh, An the, explosion of some sort at the Pentagon. Some sort. They're the, not sure whether it, it was another plane or actually a bomb, but they are uh, investigating that at this point. The Associated Press was reporting that a tail end of a large airline had plunged into that building. Right. And, of course, uh, the West Wing has also been evacuated. We're once again back live looking at this ominous and eerie shot of the World Trade Center. Um, two planes hit the two towers. Uh, the first plane shortly before 9, the second plane um, shortly, I believe, 18 minutes after, if we are correct. Um, as a result, uh, all bridges and tunnels are closed, all, all aircrafts nationwide landing. Here Here's the second plane that went into that trade tower, if you're just joining us. Second plane going into the first tower of the World Trade Center. Crashing through it, you can see the fiery explosion that resulted from that. And again, uh, countless people, obviously, in this building, in the other building as well. At this hour, we have no idea how many people have been evacuated, how many people still trapped in that building at this point. And you can see smoke, smoke pouring out of the gaping holes of the upper floors of the World Trade Center. Um, reports that a plane had struck uh, uh, the 110 story uh, building. Uh, just to give you an idea, two towers, 110 stories, countless people. 1993 uh, was the last time the World Trade Center uh, came under attack. Came actually. under attack like this. We're trying to get reports from the ground. We're trying to get reports uh, of any casualties, if there are any. Um, at this time, it's uncertain. We spoke to several uh, witnesses, and they do report uh, seeing and hearing a low-flying plane yes. that came in and uh, hit uh, that second tower that we witnessed. We were on the air for minutes. It was and an unbelievable sight. I, I, my reaction was I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. It and I think a lot of people real. who are tuning in and, right. and are listening to us are not believing what, what they're, they're actually seeing. seeing. But you are seeing... This country, as the president said, under attack, apparently. Um, we are being told that the State Department is uh, evacuating this building as well, if, uh, if we got that information correct. We're and also being told that President Bush will be briefing the nation um, as soon as uh, he is briefed. Is briefed, yes. He's in Sarasota, Florida, where, uh, where he was speaking to children. And we just saw uh, Sonia Diener live for us in Washington, where the Pentagon uh, has come under fire. The Pentagon, apparently a plane, if you can uh, show us that shot again, a plane crashing into, or a part of a plane crashing into the Pentagon, obviously that has been evacuated as well, as well as the west wing of the White House, another building nearby. Lynn, it's 9.55. We've been on the air since, I would say, uh, five minutes after nine, uh, around nine o'clock, and it's been a harrowing experience experience for us just kind of watching this and hearing reports and first seeing the first tower on fire now you're looking at the shot of Washington DC uh, part of the Pentagon as well upper right. level 
on, yeah. on fire as well. We're also reporting that uh, we're hearing reports that LaGuardia is uh, being evacuated, including the tower there. The Pentagon, okay. the Pentagon you're looking at in the background right there, again, and the, the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, both of these um, historic buildings under attack. Uh, being called terrorist attacks, obviously. And obviously you want to notice that that, that, that smoke billowing in the Washington, D.C. shot was the Pentagon in the background. That's in right. In the background. That's why it wasn't very apparent exactly, exactly what it was. Okay. Now, we, you know, we've had Melinda Murphy over this site for uh, part of the broadcast. And uh, unfortunately, the choppers are going to have to come down because LaGuardia has been evacuated and uh, the tower there cannot communicate. Um, another problem, and you know, when you think about where a terrorist would attack, uh, pick the you know the site that that obviously would cause the most problems because there are many communications points in this building, many government offices in this building, and unfortunately, many innocent victims in this building. Uh, 110 floors of the building, two towers. You can only imagine how many people uh, are in the building trying to get out of the building will never be able to get out of the building at this point. Well, Lynn, uh, uh, Dr. Kushner, a terrorism ex expert who we were talking to, was saying that the, uh, the World Trade Center is sort of the heart and symbol yes. of the United States. Along with the Pentagon. Um, and you have to, you know, this was obviously no accident that the two things happened um, side by side, if you will, within, just, uh, within a few minutes or maybe a half hour span. We're also hearing now that uh, they're evacuating Kennedy Airport as we speak. And uh, all of the airports, we're told, in the areas have been shut down. And one of the reasons might be because we were told, uh, AP first reported, that the first plane that hit the World Trade Center was a hijacked plane coming out of Boston. So you can only imagine, you know, the casualties in that alone. Um, it's just mind-boggling. You know, there, were, there are still no word on injuries or fatalities, but you could just imagine if we could see the ground, what it would look like. And we should say that our crews are not able to get too close to this site uh, for precautionary reasons. Um, the police obviously keeping people as far away from it as possible, trying frantically, I'm sure, to, to get as many people out of the building as they possibly can at this moment. Well, just a question, if we could, on air. Is there a possibility to switch to other bridges and tunnels to see if roadways are at a standstill, which I'm assuming that they are since uh, everything's been since everything has been point. closed and come to a standstill? So obviously there is going to be some backlog on the roadways as, uh, as uh, New York City and the United States takes uh, precaution, uh, closing all bridges and tunnels as well as airports. Uh, as an evacuation occurs. Penn Station also closed. Um, I would imagine any kind of transportation site at this point um, in jeopardy, people being asked not to go to public places like that. Um, we have no idea, yeah. really, and it's also what the extent of this is going to be. We're, we're looking at the first part of it, and, and hopefully it is. It, it will not progress from here, but one never assumed that we would see what we're seeing now, so we have no idea, really, what might happen next. And if we can aid those who are trying to get control of this situation, if you are at home and if you're watching this, if you can stay at home, please do. We are, okay, you're looking at another explosion right here. This is this another is explosion. Part of the tower coming down? Part of the twin tower obviously folding. Coming, crashing down. We're, we're watching a nope. live. It is right. We're watching a live it. picture of this. What? It's live. You're looking at this live. You're looking at another explosion right in the same area. Oh another explosion. It's that hard is to a tell live picture right now. We don't know exactly what has exploded. It looks, it like, looks a like a part collapsed. of the building it collapsed. Looks like, but it's unclear right now, Lynn, if, it, if that is the second tower. No, nope, the, the second, both towers are standing. This is another building in the area. It's, it's unclear right now if both which, towers are standing right nope. now because of the smoke. The second build, the, the first tower has collapsed. That's what the happened. The first tower has there collapsed. There you have it. Unbelievable. Who would have ever thought we would have witnessed something like this? And the pictures speak for themselves. Oh, you are looking at a live shot you of downtown. You are looking at devastation of downtown New York. Again, this all started just after 8 o'clock. We don't know how many people were in that tower. We don't know how many people were in both towers. 
you are looking at the complete wreck of this uh, landmark building. I speechless, speechless. All right, we're going to try to show you this again. Um, just events unfolding that that you could never imagine uh, in, in your worst nightmare. Uh, beginning right after eight o'clock this morning here in New York with the World Trade Center, uh, Tower One collapsing. Uh, from a plane that uh, the FBI is now saying may have come from a hijacked plane out of Boston. Um, shortly after that, a second plane crashing into the first tower of the World Trade Center. Now you can see, just minutes ago, the first tower collapsed completely. It looks to be demolished. That is a 110-story building um, that collapsed to the ground. And we We're are going to replay this. show it to you this. one more time. This is what you just saw if you were watching just a few minutes ago, and if you're just joining us, the first tower of the uh, landmark World Trade Center, no longer. This is what it's become. We're slow-moing this, so obviously you can see it's sort of imploding. If, if I can say that it is imploding, yes. it is imploding and coming to the ground 110 stories. In front of our eyes. Obviously, the, you, well, our thoughts are that with the people who may have been inside at the time this happened and how and who and why absolute devastation you're looking at a live picture of lower Manhattan here the landscape just completely vanished gone oh. and what a beautiful clear incredible day this started out as and it has turned into a day of just complete devastation. And of course, Lynn, a lot of people living in the surrounding boroughs, I'm sure because it is such a clear day, can stand outside and, and see, it, and and see it. what's unfolding right. before our very eyes as, as the two of us are watching this. And everyone with us here in the in this studio, it's just incredulous because no one would imagine that this could happen anywhere, let alone here in New York City. Um, we're also being told that again at this point most public places of transportation have been shut down uh, all airports shut down uh, Penn Station shut down also other government institutions including the Treasury and the State Department are being evacuated in Washington DC uh, Paul Begala according to the AP a Democratic consultant said he witnessed an explosion near the Pentagon he described it as a huge fireball a huge orange fireball he said another witness told him that a helicopter exploded. We are going to go once again to the explosion that just occurred. And this again is the first tower of the World Trade Center. Twin we, towers. It's folding before your eyes. Uh, we, we first reported to you that uh, there were reports of a first plane that may have been hijacked from Boston. Now we're hearing that that second plane uh, may have. These are reports now. This is unconfirmed that this report uh, is saying that the second plane may have come uh, from Newark Airport. And as a result uh, of that second plane, um, there was sort of a, a wow, look at that close up shot to the utter chaos that is uh, All right. kind of uh, on the ground here. Unbelievable. Then that's the first shot we've been able to get close to the scene on the ground. You can see complete chaos. We've got right now. Jeremy Fox on the line. He is an eyewitness. He lives in the vicinity. Jeremy, can you hear us? I can hear you. Tell me what you're seeing right now. The, everything is white outside my window. What happened, I saw the second building blow, and it the, just crumbled down, and I saw the core of the building slowly crush to the ground, fall to the ground. My, out my window now, I can see nothing. Everything is white. What I saw before was people running in front of the hospital, running all over on the streets, running away from, from the west side, because I live on the east side, close to the FDR. I, everything outside is pure white. You can't see a thing. I live across the yard from me, about 100 yards is another building. I can't see two feet in front of me. I had to close my windows because it's so smoky down here. What are the people around you saying? What's the reaction around you in that neighborhood? Pure horror, it seems like. It seems like people are running away for their lives. Like, they don't know what's going on. Pure confusion. I, I myself, I don't know. I live so close. I'm like, I can't imagine what just happened. I'm like... Where just, do you live, Jeremy, for the folks who are just tuning in? I live in. on Gold Street, right across from the Beekman right. Hospital, where they're taking all the patients. Jer I saw them bring all the, a lot of patients in before. Jeremy, obviously, can you please tell us... I mean, we were watching... 
the second to the tower go down. Can you please describe to us on the ground w w what did that look like? I'm not on the ground. I'm on the 26th floor of a building across the way. Right now, you can see nothing outside. When it when it went off the second building, it you saw an explosion, and then you just saw the, a humongous cloud of smoke go up, and you saw the building start to fall down, and then you saw the core of the building just start to disintegrate into itself. There's ashes on my terrace everywhere. You can't see a thing. The smell is horrible. They smell smoke everywhere. Did it, did it look like an implosion that internally, was it, was it that the, when the plane crashed, I mean, was there another explosion it inside like, that vicinity of that area, almost like a, I, it we're looked speculating like here, explosion. possibly a, a bomb? I couldn't, it, it, the second building, the, both buildings were just burning and like they constantly burning. And then right below the left building, the one without the news tower, the, the satellite tower, it just looked like an explosion below the uh, below the, the where it was burning, and then it just came down. All right, Jeremy, you were telling us before that you saw the ambulances going to the hospital. Describe yes. what that was like. It was hor horrific. They had there were men in you know the amb they had beds lined up outside the uh, emergency room waiting for patients. They were bringing them in cars, not in ambulances anymore, um, as well as ambulances. They were. People coming in and on stretchers, they just looked, you know, shaken and horrible. I mean, I'm on the 26th floor and I looked at it. Now you purely, you cannot see two inches in front of your face if you're on the street right now. People downstairs must be in, ha in pure havoc. I mean, you can't see anything outside. Jeremy, you must be fearing for your own life at this point. You're so close I, to it. I'm very nervous. I, I'm not happy about, you know, like, this at all. I'm scared for everyone around and involved. I can't imagine what the destruction that just caused for people. I'm very nervous. My, everyone in my family, as you can hear, my phone is ringing, is calling to make sure I'm okay. I'm, I'm scared as could be. I'm, you, know. you were reporting also that you aren't being, you're not able to get any broadcast. Is that right? No, no. I'm getting your broadcast right now. I'm getting the only channel that's not coming in is Channel 9. Um, every other channel is coming in. Uh, you're coming in on WB11, um, and you can see the smoke and the... The right building is still burning. Jeremy, what's the first thing you saw earlier? The first thing I heard was I felt, it ex I felt a boom across, next to my window. And I, that woke me up and got me out of bed. And I, went to, and I heard ambulances and cars coming, and I went to look out my window. And I was watching as, and I was on the phone with one of your news staff reporters, as the smoke is starting to clear, I'll walk out on my terrace. Hold on. Oh, my God, there's debris everywhere. It's horrible. You can't. See, there's white powder everywhere, um, on my terrace, on the ground, everywhere. I, this is like a war zone, I assume. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Is it tough for you even to breathe? Now it is. I'm going back into my apartment. All right. Um, the second, then I was watching, and as I was watching, the plane must have come from the other side because I saw the second building blow. I saw it looked more like an outward explosion because the plane came from the other side. And I saw that pure explosion and took pictures of it. What, now there's another. There's what was another going banging, through your uh, mind while you were doing all of this, Jeremy? The horror that people are going through right now, the families that are losing people right now, and the, there's another plane. No, that's your. There's a helicopter. The, the horror that families are going through, that, that people are going through right now, the confusion. This, that people don't understand what's going on right now. I, I don't understand what's going on right now. It, I, I just, the, the insecurity that I feel right now and that I'm not around my loved ones right now and how horrible for people who, who work in the World Trade Center and who have family in the World Trade Center. And I pray to God that they evacuated that building in time to get rid of all those people, to get those people in safe lives. And, I, I, and the, the, the massive damage that that building falling down must have done to everyone. I think we're all feeling uh, the same emotions at this point. We're being joined now by Jim Watkins from uh, the Channel 11 News at 10. Jim, were you watching this at home? Was this a shock to you as well when you when you first got up? Well, th there's a sense that my wife came and woke me up and uh, told me that we were getting a call from our news director saying, this has happened, you must go in. And there's a sense that I'm sure everybody is experiencing, whether they were asleep or whether they are awake when they first heard it, that no, that this must be a mistake. Possible, that's, yes. simply, that's simply not possible. That's worse than the worst case scenario we'd ever pictured before. So I jumped in a cab, I was coming down Fifth Avenue to our studios here on 42nd Street, and just like you're hearing from everybody else, people are standing out on the street. You can see actually down Fifth Avenue, there's almost a corridor looking straight at the, the smoking building, and this was before the tower collapsed. People standing there just 
with mute, dumb expressions on their face. Incredulous. Just, they're incredulous. Uh, it, it's almost as if we're, we're living through some sort of a sort of a terrible dream here this morning. But uh, well, we are under attack, and I don't think any of us in our lifetimes have ever witnessed anything quite like this. Um, you know, you read about things like this in other places, but we never think about it happening in our backyard. When when it happened in '93, when the World Trade Center came under attack, then. We thought, okay, there are a lot of safeguards in place. Right. This can never happen again. And here you're seeing the Pentagon right now. The Pentagon right now live shot on fire. Horrific sight. Uh, I understand also that perhaps this has been caused by yet another hijacked plane. Another that was hijacked crashed plane that's crashed into the, into the Pentagon. The Pentagon. As well. That's right. There's so many uh, aspects of this, uh, everyone, that we just don't have any idea about. How are the planes hijacked? What was this? Uh, how in the world did control of the planes go to the Right. But what we're hearing terrorists. is, it, it, since you're just joining us, we're hearing that the first plane was hijacked out of Boston. And that was the first plane that hit the second tower of the World Trade Center. The second plane, we are told, was hijacked out of Newark oh. Airport. And that was the one that we experienced here live. We saw the explosion coming around the back side of the first tower of the World Trade Center and just went through it. And just minutes ago, right here again live, if you were watching, you saw that tower fold, crushed, right before our very eyes. And we can only imagine the devastation in the area uh, the people who may have been trapped in that building and in the second tower that is still standing. And we should mention also that the uh, that, that the the towers, of course, are, are dependent upon one another for their structure. Take a look at the tower collapsing here. here this it is. is going to be uh, just an insidious sight. Words uh, cannot describe what must be going on on the ground below. I we don't have any idea yet what the evacuation procedures, what the no triage no. procedures were going on. Perhaps there were people directly below there. You have to think somehow that emergency personnel were, uh, were organized down below. Of course, all this is going to have to wait till later on. But now the good concern is, is the second tower going to go down since the first one is no longer there to support it structurally anymore? And there are unconfirmed reports that that may be about to happen. And uh, we pray against it, but uh, we will keep watching. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange closed. Uh, buildings in the area have been evacuated. All transportation locations, um, the airports, and uh, I would imagine in most of the area closed down, uh, Penn Station evacuated. Um, people were hearing reports of people just as you were saying, not knowing what is going on. Uh, many of them have lost uh, their broadcast capacity because some of that right. comes from the World right. Trade Centers. Total confusion. Um, what is this? How did it happen? Why did this happen? The uh, uh, also should mention, Lynn, that the uh, the towers and the, uh, or the tunnels and the bridges are closed as well and I, and I want to tell you from just having been out there a moment ago uh, if, if you're if you're in Manhattan just do not don't go outside no. don't, don't try to take any kind of a vehicle uh, any kind of public transportation I wouldn't be surprised if it's a matter of time before uh, some of the public transportation is grounded as well exactly and if you're looking at this right now and if you live in the area we are being told that you should not go outside you should not breathe in fumes because some of these fumes could be noxious um, obviously that's not what people would first react to, but you have to take care. Right now you're looking at a live shot of the Pentagon, the Pentagon burning. Uh, another plane crashed into the Pentagon shortly after the uh, twin towers of the World Trade Center came under fire from two what appear to be terrorist uh, plane attacks, planes that were hijacked, one again from Boston Airport, the other from Newark Airport. This is again the live shot of the Pentagon back here live to New York City. You're only looking at one remaining tower of the World Trade Center. The first is no longer. Um, it has crashed to the ground. It's collapsed and uh, now there is fear that the second tower may do the same. The, uh, the uh, airlines, the FAA uh, has issued its first ever in this country right. national ground stop meaning all airports are closed. Here's the second plane hitting the, the second tower. And it's horrifying. As you watch it comes right through that tower from the back in a fiery explosion. And this. we have no idea how many people were in that building at the time that this happened. No idea how many had been evacuated. Uh, no idea what the casualties might be on the ground. But we just, here's the tower once again collapsing. And this happened maybe 15 minutes ago. And there it is, crumbling to the ground.
Unbelievable. Oh, now, we had somebody on the phone just recently talking about uh, people being taken to area hospitals, and he was saying it was beyond ambulances at this point. People were being taken in, in cars to hospitals. So obviously the damage is great, um, the casualties uh, and, many And of course there. now the problem in, uh, in lower Manhattan and, through, and throughout much of the city is, is traffic is so terrible it's going to be very difficult for emergency vehicles and ambulances to do what they have to do. But, and the uh, media being kept away from this so we can't get too close. Our vantage point is not that great. Um, but we are going to be talking to people who can see this. Um, again, we were talking to a young man named Jeremy Fox, and his reaction was, what is going on? And that has to be the reaction to most New Yorkers who are, n are not tuned in to what's happening. Well, here in our, in our station just a few moments ago, one of our crew members uh, came into the room uh, where I was. Uh, he was in tears, and uh, he said that his fiance is uh, in a building that is located down in that area right there. So many New Yorkers are going through exactly this right now. Okay, we've got Jamie Fox back on the line. He is the witness we were talking about. Jamie, can you hear? Jeremy, Jeremy yes. Jeremy, I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, there's, it's, everyone's walking around on the streets down downstairs they're not running anymore. They're just walking like they don't know what to do anymore. I'm back out on my terrace trying not to breathe too deeply. There's white, white powder just covers everything. Um, people are walking outside the hospital just walking. They don't know what to do anymore, I think. Uh, it's, everything is covered. The second building is, is burning. I, I just, you know, everyone's running around just walking, actually, not even running in, in utter confusion as to what's going on, just crossing the streets of of Gold Street, just and up to up to the FDR, um, to the East River, from the, which the, the World Trade Centers are on the West Side Highway, as everyone knows, it, it's just covered in white powder. Everything is covered, and it, there's just a, a, a smoke everywhere that's starting to clear and starting to pass. And, and Jeremy, I, you were saying that you were taking pictures. You've chosen to stay. Why? I, this is my home. I don't know where to go. I mean, I, I can't leave. I mean. I have nowhere else to go. I, I could leave and go somewhere in this neighborhood, but I can't get out of this neighborhood. I live, you know, I live here. Mm -hmm. I, I have no no other possibilities. I'm I'm very, you know, I'm very nervous. I would, I would pray to God that you know they wouldn't bring down these residential buildings that I live in. But I, I couldn't imagine the damage that those buildings have done. That that dropping that the World Trade Center has done. I'm still wondering what brought that building down. Well, our reports are that uh, a hijacked plane, a plane that was hijacked. A third plane brought that one down? No, the this, this second one was a collapse of the building, and that might have been structural because of all the damage incurred by okay. the explosion, by the plane crashing into it. There is some talk that there is a possibility now of the second tower also crashing to the ground um, because the two towers apparently were interdependent on each other for stability. So eyes are focused now on this tower. Hopes are that it will stay intact, but we are not certain yet. I mean, I pray to God that all the families of people, that they've evacuated everyone out of these buildings, and all the families, you know, just, oh, it's so horrible. I mean, Jeremy, are you, are you getting any kind of sense at all of what the situation might be there at the, at the base, uh, uh, no, the base I'm of not, the towers? I'm east of the base. I can, what I can see now is I can see the top of the building, the, the right building with the tower, with the satellite tower, <coughs> Excuse me, it's billowing smoke. Downstairs, people are just walking on. I look, I'm looking down onto Gold and, and Fulton Street. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm outside and um, I'm looking up to the FDR, and people are actually walking on the FDR. They're, they must be evacuating everything and, and having people walk on the FDR. And people are walking around in utter confusion and, and just, it doesn't seem like they know what to do or where to go. I mean, because there is nowhere to go. All right, thank you so much. We're going to come back to you. Um, okay. We can just tell you now that the, uh, the plane that first crashed um, into the second tower was a 767 uh, Boeing plane, and it was out of Boston. It was apparently hijacked from Boston. That was the first crash, and that happened just after 8 o'clock. The second crash that we've showed you quite a few times, and we'll probably show that to you again, uh, came from a hijacked plane apparently from Newark, New Jersey. And here it is, you can see it again. This is the one that caused the most devastation because you're going to see what happens next. The plane goes from the back of the tower all the way through it. The fire explosion that um, happens after that. And then not more than maybe a half hour to 40 minutes later, the entire tower 
just collapses. And we're, we're getting some indication from Melinda Murphy uh, in, in our helicopter. She, it, it looks to her, at least, as if the second tower appears to be perhaps buckling or leaning. And uh, I'm going to... Debris actually falling from the building. And you can imagine, can you... The people in the area, what must be going through their minds at this point? Uh, many of them, again, not knowing, uh, not having access to television or radio. Um, and they have no idea. All they're seeing is this fiery uh, mass in the sky and all kinds of evacuations, people being taken to hospitals, mass confusion at this point and in of Lower course, Manhattan. It's just such enormous structures. Uh, they are literally blocks high and blocks and blocks around the structures are going to be affected by, by the collapse and Absolutely. the threatened collapse of the second one. Um, we are just beginning, uh, everyone, to scratch the surface here of, of, of trying to understand what the damage could be. And while we're looking at these pictures here in New York, the Pentagon also under attack, if we will. Um, just after this happened, a plane crashed apparently into the Pentagon in Washington. There you see it there. Uh, you're looking at the aftermath of that now. The Pentagon has been evacuated, as has the west wing of the White House and another building nearby. So uh, all kinds of... Uh, I explosions in, in on the east coast of our country, uh, both in Washington and New York City. And again, uh, there's so much to these tragedies that what is really shocking is that we're being told that these were hijacked planes, hijacked planes. Just thinking about the loss of life on the, on planes, the planes alone. And, exactly. Uh, kamikaze hijackers uh, who took the lives of not only themselves, but all the innocent people along with them, both in the buildings and in those planes. Well, obviously, this is uh, the government, uh, all uh, local uh, civic disaster services is on the highest alert uh, possible FBI across the country. FBI is involved, absolutely. Once again, we should mention that uh, wh wherever you may be in this country, there, you're not going to be flying out of any airport. All airports are closed. No planes are taking off. Any, any planes that are in the air are being ordered to land the highest uh, security clearances, highest levels of, uh, of uh, security are being ordered across the country. Okay, there are also now unconfirmed reports of anonymous planes, anonymous planes in Virginia, right around the airspace of Virginia. So um, fo uh, they're focusing their attention now on that as well. Um, we have no idea, obviously, no idea uh, who might be responsible for this. No one has claimed responsibility, and we have no idea of the magnitude of the human casualties. Um, we can only imagine uh, as this happened during uh, the start of the work day here in New York and in Washington, D.C. And you remember back in 1993, Lynn, at the attack of the World Trade Center then, that, that later on as the entire scope of the plot began to be learned, that there were, they believed they had plans, that they believed they, they had uncovered plans where terrorists were then waiting for people to flee Manhattan and bomb possibly the George Washington Bridge. Right or the, uh, the Hollander Lincoln Tunnels. Now you're looking For at the that pictures, reason, everything right? is closed out mm -hmm. in, in and out of the city. And this is a, a shot you're seeing right there of the uh, earlier attack back in 93 of the World Trade Center. Six people died in that attack. Um, there were a few people who went to trial for that, still uh, serving time for that, convicted of that. Um, and the message after that was that there is more to come. We've heard rumors of that. We've been on alert for that for several years. Um, and a lot of precaution has been taken, but there is no precaution that you can take uh, in airspace, obviously, from what we've seen. Um, two planes crashing right into the upper floors of the uh, World Trade Towers. The first one, the upper floors, the second plane crashing into here's, the center. Uh, here's, of one the first more, one. here's one more update from Washington, Lynn. Uh, the AP is reporting that a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department. This is live Washington that you're seeing right now. All right, we don't ambulance. know exactly what the location is there, but emergency vehicles perhaps heading to the State Department once again reports that a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department. No word uh, at all yet on what the extent uh, of the damage uh, would be from that. And uh, President Bush on the air live uh, a little while ago saying that this country is uh, under a terrorist attack. And that's obviously uh, exactly what is happening here. We don't know the full scope of it yet. We are watching it unfold as no, you Well, do. yeah, nobody knows the full scope of it, even the people at the highest levels. President Bush, uh, who was who in Sarasota, Florida, uh, I believe visiting a school mm -hmm. at the time he was notified of this, has, um, has uh, sent his uh, sympathies uh, to uh, any people impacted by this tragedy. He's ordered a full-scale investigation to, quote, hunt down the folks who committed this act. All right, we were speaking to a terrorist expert. Um, I don't know if we still have the doctor on the line.
Dr. Kushner. Can you hear? I'm sorry, he has uh, left us for the moment. Hopefully, we'll get back to him. Um, we do have crews on the way to the scene, but we've been telling you the problem with uh, most broadcasting uh, in and around this area is that, is that we're not being allowed to get close to the scene for obvious reasons. Um, but we do have Melinda Murphy in the area. She is in Chopper 11. Uh, she's been reporting all morning that there's debris coming out of the building, and it looks like the building is actually buckling now, and this is the second tower of the World Trade Center, the first tower completely demolished at this point. If you are just joining us, this is not uh, some sort of a bad dream you're looking at right there. Yeah. That is the World Trade Center minus one tower. The, uh, the second tower collapsed earlier about an hour after the impact from a jetliner which was apparently deliberately flown into it. Yes, and from a hijacked plane, from what we're told, again, uh, the first plane crash, uh, the plane hijacked, according to the FBI, according to AP, out of Boston, the second, right out of Newark Airport. Okay, we've got Sukanya Krishna now. Shikanya, what can you tell us? Lynn, we're on the street here on 42nd and 2nd Avenue just to give you an idea of what's going on. It seems like it's rush hour right now. You can see we're at a phone booth, a lot of people trying to get in touch with their loved ones. I was one of those on a cell phone, sir. Were you able to get service with that? No. As a result of no service, you've got people that are just trying uh, to get in touch with anyone who is downtown. Ma'am, can you just be careful? As you can see, some people obviously very emotional here. If you can just take a look over here, people trying to figure out what is going on. Uh, the whole consensus is out on the street. Not a lot of people really understand what is happening on the streets of New York. Uh, if you can take a look, a lot of people have come up to me, asked me questions. Do you know what's going on? A lot of people are unaware, but what we can tell you is that a lot of businesses are letting people go. If you can take a look down here on 2nd Avenue, a lot of the people are coming this way. Also, you're hearing uh, fire engines, you're hearing police trucks, uh, just a slew of activity as uh, people are trying to make a mad dash, but the problem is as we have been notifying people, all bridges and tunnels are closed, as well as what we are seeing, a lot of buses are not in service. So at this point, if you are in Manhattan, my understanding is you should stay in Manhattan or try and stay in this vicinity because the roadways are clogged. I'm going to try and talk to some people and see if uh, they have an idea of what's going on. Ma'am, were you let out of work early today? You're on live, uh, Channel um. 11. I was at the world. I was working. I work on 55 Water, a TD Waterhouse. We saw the whole thing. You saw, saw everything. The plane hit. We saw the second plane. We saw the, when the thing blew up, the fire, and we lost it. Everybody just left. That was it. Can you can you just tell me you were on the ground? Tell me your name. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Jeanette. Jeanette. Oh God. You're obviously <laughs> very emotional. Jeanette. I know, I know. I can totally understand that. Uh, yes, go ahead, Jim. As you, as you basically informed some people what happened, assuming some people had no idea what was happening, what kinds of reactions are you getting from people? Oh, there, look there at goes this. The second right, tower. You're going to the second tower. You're looking at this oh, live okay. right now. Okay. Both towers now completely destroyed of the World Trade Center. You have no idea how many people may have been in those buildings. We have no idea. This is a major communication center for this city, for this country, um, many government offices in those towers. Amazing video as you're watching it now. It's not video, it's live. It's right before your very eyes. This the World is Trade Center is gone, ladies and gentlemen. It, um... Both buildings collapsing from apparent terrorist attacks. And we want to just take you through this. The first explosion happened right after 8 o'clock this morning. We're being told that a plane was hijacked from Boston Airport. It flew into the second tower of the two World Trade Center towers. The second plane, coming 18 minutes later, flew into the first tower, into the middle part of that first tower. It exploded inside the building, coming from the back all the way into the front of the building. A few minutes later, here's there was a look, at the, here's a look at the second plane hitting. A few minutes later, there was a report in Washington that the Pentagon had been hit, and there was a report that the tail end of a plane had exploded into the Pentagon. You're looking now, again, at a shot that happened at about 9.15, 9.14 this morning. That's the, this is what's happening. Then after that, the first tower collapsed. You can see that. That was right around 10 o'clock, maybe a little bit before 10 o'clock. It's about to collapse, the first tower of the World Trade Center. Shortly after that, as we were saying, the second tower, 
the tower was buckling, there was debris falling from it, and then a half hour later, this is what you saw just a few seconds ago right here live, the second tower collapses. The human toll untold right now, we have no idea how many people were in those buildings we or around the buildings. We have no idea what was going at this on point. Down below. We do know that the stock exchange has been closed. Buildings in the area have been evacuated. Penn Station evacuated. The, the airports have been shut down because of the hijackings involved. Now, we're told of the two here in New York. We were telling you earlier about the Pentagon also uh, being under attack. And here you're seeing that now, a plane crashing into the Pentagon. The Pentagon was evacuated. The west wing of the White House has been evacuated. Another building nearby has been evacuated. And there was just a report of a car well, bomb, a car bomb also outside the State Department in Washington. So some sort of grand uh, uh, terrorist plan is being executed here. Uh, I, I think what is, 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 is striking is going to strike a lot of people is that there apparently was absolutely no word, no intelligence whatsoever, no forewarning whatsoever. Uh, about the possibility of, of such an attack even being uh, You hear imagined. threats yes. all the time, uh, Jim, and you hear them, and you always think you're safe. You always think, okay, the FBI is on top of this. It can't happen. It will never happen here. But you can never feel too safe, apparently, from what we're watching now. We started out this day, a beautiful, clear day, and before we knew it, one tower of the World Trade Center was exploding a plane crashing into it, a hijacked plane of all things, a hijacked plane coming out of Boston exploding into it, and then a second one exploding into it. There you're looking at it, uh, Washington right now. That, uh, that, actually, that is New York City right now. That is the leveling of the World Trade Center. The landscape will never, will be, never the same. be the same in Manhattan. Will never be the same in Lower Manhattan. That has, be that has become Manhattan. the uh, landmark that, is, that has uh, anchored the lower end of Manhattan, right. and it is, uh, it is gone today. We also just heard that... Uh, all international flights coming into uh, New York or Washington are being diverted to Canada, so they're not even letting uh, international planes land in this country right now. Uh, also, no planes can take off from any airport anywhere in the U.S. Planes that are currently in the air must land, but it's up to the pilot and the individual airlines whether they go on to their destination or land immediately. And also we're told that the area around the U.N. has been uh, closed off, shut down. Uh, we have no idea if there have been any threats in that area, but that has been shut down as well. It may be precautionary. Right. The U.N. just a few blocks from here. We have some people over there, and hopefully we'll be bringing you some reports from that soon. That would certainly uh, uh, be a high-priority uh, target uh, on, uh, on a, uh, a day such as this, and we'll, uh, we'll bring you the latest from there as so soon as we can. It's incredible to watch. These are live pictures, two of the countries major cities, Washington, D.C., and New York under terrorist attack. And those were the words of the president earlier, as he said, our country is under terrorist attack. We're all going to be, uh, we're going to be cutting to the president at some point. He's going to have a statement for us. Um, what you're seeing on the ground there is actually uh, dust right. from the debris, from the collapse of the towers. It looks like it's uh, already uh, an inch thick And plus. that's all that is left of the Twin Towers at this hour. Dust. Unbelievable. Completely devastated. And again, we have no idea of the human casualties, the tolls here. What's no, as I was saying before, there's just so much that we uh, have yet to learn. That we still have yet to learn, both about the extent of the damage and how this uh, even began to uh, unfold in the first place. But it, it looks as if there are a thousand uh, nightmare stories yeah. to be told here. Um, I don't know if we have our eyewitness on the on the line still. Do we have Jeremy on the line at this point? May we speak with him again? Uh, we're going to come to him in a few minutes. We've got Sakanya Krishnan. She is live for us outside, very close to the UN. It's also been uh, shut down at this time, the, the area around the UN. Sakanya, what can you tell us? Right, Lynn, we're on 42nd and 2nd. And as you can see, there are buses, but this bus is crossing through and it's kind of blocking our way right now. But none of the buses are in service as we're speaking. We want to point out to a lot of people that there are no train service, there are no ferries, the tunnels are closed, most bridges are closed. And if you can look over here, traffic is completely being diverted from the UN. If you can get a sneak peek, because uh, police have completely cordoned off that area as uh, obviously the UN uh, uh, possibly could be another target. A lot of people are just kind of walking around uh, unaware of what's going on. Sir, can I talk to you? Uh, obviously, you left work early. I was in the UN itself, and um, 
I happened to arrive just about the time that they that the planes did hit the the World Trade Center, and um, it was a while before they actually evacuated the building. But now it seems that they're telling everybody to uh, leave. They had us down in the first basement. And uh, what was now, the mode there? Were they telling people to be prepared um, that? To Anything could happen at this point well, at the UN, obviously a landmark building. At that point in the morning, it was still r relatively uh, empty because people were coming in, just coming into work. So um, a lot of people were blocked from coming upstairs at all. I was already upstairs, and eventually they told us to uh, evacuate the building. Where are you from, sir? I'm from Mastic, Long Island. Mastic, Long Island. And are you aware that there are no there trains? Are, yeah, I, okay. I, I realize I'm stuck here now till whatever happens. Okay. Obviously, this woman trying to get service. Are you trying to get through? I can't. There's, there's like no signal. My father's in the city, but I, don't, I think you can't even get out of the city at this point. Can you tell me what's going through your mind at this point? I'm a nervous wreck. I want to throw up. It's like one of those movies, like the Independence Day, when they come over and they take over the city. That's how I feel. When you, I work up up there by the window, so I, I had to leave. What, when, you, when you heard it was happening, when you saw the first tower go down. I have girlfriends. All my friends are in the World Trade Center on the 42nd floor. I don't know which building or if they're okay, but, you know, cell phones don't work at this point. Can so. I t uh, mm -hmm. Both towers of the of the World Trade Center have gone down at this point. They crumbled? Both oh have God. crumbled. <laughs> Insanity. Do they know who's responsible for this? We, we Terrorists not, or it's just assumptions right now? We do not know. It's just assumptions, but uh, oh my God. Uh, good luck to you. Please be safe. Thank you. I know. I, I think, is there yeah. a way out of there, there is no way out of here if you can just stay put. I know. I, and, I know and this is the problem. A lot of people are just trying to figure out what are we going to do. That's kind of why everybody's sort of approaching me. Just take a look. This has been a familiar scene. Uh, police cars, unmarked cruisers running down the street, obviously very busy. Uh, we saw a fire engine that actually came up the opposite way on 2nd Avenue. Uh, you can tell a lot of people are trying to get cabs. Uh, unbelievable. If you could just turn over here, if I can give you... Uh, sort of a sort of a look as to what this street looks like uh, the bus stops are packed uh, people are just kind of uh, scratching their heads unclear of what they're going to do this is excuse me ma'am this is definitely what people are doing trying to get in touch with their loved ones you can see the line here uh, for the payphone obviously cell phones are not working um, let's just see if somebody is able to get through sir were you able to get through on the phone you are not able to get through? Yeah, no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Who are you trying to reach? Uh, SBS. Yeah. Um, are you trying to get in touch with friends? Uh, friends, yeah. Are you nervous at this point? Yeah, I'm very nervous, nervous about this situation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Do you have friends that work downtown, sir? Yes. Uh, we saw saw the the firing and the uh, scaring, very scary. You very know? scary. Yeah, yeah. Did you, did you see what was going on, sir? Have you no, I was on the bus going to Atlantic City. So uh, you There's obviously are unaware of what's going they, on. I, I'm aware of it. I got a portable radio. They closed the bus. What they is going through your phone. mind right now? It's terrible. Yeah. It's like a book, like a movie. It's like, like a Japanese movie coming to New York. Ma'am, uh, can I talk to you? You're obviously part of the United Nations. Were you one of the few people that were evacuated from the United Nations? They started screaming and said, everybody leave the building immediately. We were actually part of the Tarumi violinists who were all about to performing, he had his violin up, ready to play, and they just came running and they said, Clear. Did you know at that point what was going on, what has been happening since 9 o'clock this morning? Someone called my cell phone and said something happened at the World Trade Center, something, and... Uh, you know that both towers of the World Trade Center have crashed. Just heard it. We were actually one of the fathers that, of the performers worked down in that building. Had we not been there, he would have been in the building, so he was just devastated, and it's, it's awful. Are you... I don't know, uh, Lynn and Jim, I don't know if you can hear the utter chaos that's kind of going on here. Once again, uh, if you could take a look at 2nd Avenue, which is the main access that would go down uh, to, uh, to World Trade, to Lower Manhattan, you can see that uh, ambulances are sort of racing down. And, uh, and you mentioned also, Sakani, that you're, you're, you're still, we're still a long way uh, outside here from the World Trade Center, right. so we, we can only imagine what the scenario is we there. We are, but uh, just to give you an idea, 2nd Avenue has virtually clear from, from what I, my vantage point right now. 2nd Avenue past 34th Street looks like it is absolutely clear that they have cleared the roadways, um, and that way emergency officials can get to where they are going. The whole thing is uh, where they are detouring traffic right now. That's that's the question, and a lot of people uh, have a lot of answers, Jim. And obviously, a lot of uncertainty on the streets. People trying to get cabs, people trying to get home, uh, and and uh, people trying to contact their loved ones. Thank you so much, Sakanya. We will get back to you in just a little bit. Okay. You know, we're forgetting one thing. Today is primary it's day. Election day. It's election day, and all of the polling places we are told have now been closed. And you are looking at a live picture 
of the devastation of Lower Manhattan. You're looking where the uh, World Trade Center Once stood. used to stand. And I cannot believe I'm saying those words. Those two towers under attack earlier this morning, just after 8 o'clock. Two planes, uh, one coming from Boston, the second plane that you're seeing now apparently hijacked from out of Newark, coming around the first tower of the World Trade Center. Now that was the first tower, you're going to see the explosion, there it is going through the building. Just a little while after that, that tower collapsed. Here is the collapse right now. And this is what happened right around 10 o'clock this morning. And the two towers were interdependent uh, structurally. So what happened next was the second tower started to buckle. Debris kept falling from it. And then eventually, a half hour later, this is what happened to that tower, completely destroyed. And again, we talk and we see the pictures, but what we don't see is what's happening in the area or inside of those buildings. The only thing we can really know for sure is what's happening in the area is that there's almost, a, now you're looking at the Pentagon right now, right. obviously serious damage caused to the Pentagon. I believe there are reports there were that another plane, we assume it was a hijacked plane as well, crashed into the Pentagon this morning and the enormous fire is burning there as well. We do not know, uh, uh, as we it's, it's situation here, do not know what the extent of the damage at the Pentagon is, what the extent of the uh, possible loss of life and injuries. Right. We're just now told that there's been a fourth explosion. And we're also being told that witnesses have reported seeing bodies falling from the Trade Center, and they also saw people jumping from the building. Uh, we can only imagine just how terrifying all of this is at, uh, at ground zero right there. All of lower Manhattan inundated with the dust and debris from the tower collapse. There's actually a, a, a threat of respiratory problems if you right. go outside now. If you're anywhere in lower Manhattan, the best thing, the best thing you can do uh, is to stay in your home, stay put. And we, were, we just received word that there was a fourth explosion at the World Trade Center. We have no idea what that was, if it was related to the first two explosions, um, secondary explosions from the first two, or obviously other attacks. But that is the live picture that you're seeing. That is where the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers once stood, and now devastation. The AP is calling it a well-orchestrated orgy of terrorism. And um, clearly this was, this was the one that, uh, that the United States has been dreading since terrorism began. And in two cities you're looking right now, we're back live in New York City, lower Manhattan where the World Trade Center was. We were just showing you pictures of the Pentagon in Washington where another plane, a fire plane over the Washington. This is a live shot. You are looking at this now. Take a look. This is a plane over Washington. A plane over Washington. It that was yes, a fighter it, plane. I, I, it's, it's to no surprise, uh, military planes have now taken to the air over Washington amid, right. amid reports that other other planes, perhaps in they the, fear other hijacked planes with other targets in mind, right. were in the Washington area. We have just been informed that in western Pennsylvania, Somerset County Airport, a large plane has gone down there. We don't know what the circumstances are, don't know if there's any particular intended target. Uh, in western Pennsylvania. One more thing we'll, we'll just have to try to effort uh, more information on and, and keep you up on. Now, you know, as we're talking to you and telling you what you're seeing uh, right in front of your eyes, if you're able to watch television at this point, um, if you have this communication vehicle, the country, the eastern part of this country, is under attack. Yes, uh, this is, we are, the country's under attack, absolutely. Um, I, the highest levels of, uh, of security are, are in effect in Washington and New York. Life has come to a standstill here. Traffic has come to a halt. Bridges and tunnels are all completely closed. And every uh, every contingency plan you could think of, uh, and then some, are in effect right now. Although I must say that this attack, um, I'm going to guess, has exceeded the worst the worst fears of I people who specialize be... in, this, uh, in this type of prevention. I think that would be safe to say. Again, two of our city's <laughs> biggest towns uh, right now uh, um, on the East Coast. New York City, Washington under attack, president calling it the country under terrorist attack. Sukanya is standing by uh, Sukanya Christian back on 42nd Street. They've evacuated the UN. Sukanya. All right, uh, we're just going to take a look at what's happening on 3rd Avenue. The UN is right over here. You can see the Israeli consulate is over here. You can see emergency service medical squad running, racing down 2nd Avenue to get to where you're going to. Obviously, a lot of people trying to 
get out of the city. Uh, Mark was actually in lower Manhattan. Mark, you witnessed the first plane going in. Can you just tell us what you saw? I uh, just heard a loud noise as though the plane was going to crash and everyone ducked. And then we saw the plane just veer right into the building and hit the top of the building. That was the first one, right? Explosion. What went through your mind and what did you see? Did you see the smoke? Did you see the yeah. explosion? I saw everything. I thought it, was, uh, thought it was just a random act. thought that the plot pilot had gotten out of control. Um, then, this, then we were watching it from um, Lafayette Street. And about 10 minutes later, 12 minutes later, the second one hit from behind. I just saw a glimpse of the plane coming down and hitting from the opposite side of the building. It was like a big rippling effect. All the glass exploded. Can you tell me what was happening on the ground? On the were ground. people running for cover? Oh, yeah. And when the second one, first people were watching, spectators were watching the first building go up in flames. When the second one hit, um, people started running. There was paper flying everywhere. You could see um, there was like a big rippling effect. People were screaming. Um, and then within five or ten minutes, there were people actually in our area who were bloody. Shirts were ripped. The Associated Press was reporting that there were reports from witnesses saying that there were bodies falling from the ground. Right, did you yeah. did you see that? Yeah, you could see things falling from it. Um, you know, we're, from the distance we were at, it looked like there was a lot of metal falling, a lot of um, paper building, office supplies, desks coming down, and then of course bodies. You could see a lot of bodies flying down as well. It was awful. Can you can you just tell me, you saw one of the towers collapse, didn't you? Right, it collapsed right on top of itself. What, what and then people, it was pandemonium. People were screaming, running for cover. Um, instant cloud cover and then I was able to get on the subway at the time and make it back up to uptown so when you saw the collapse that's when you left right that's when I left did you know that the second tower also collapsed um, I actually was on the roof of my building here on 42nd we just I just witnessed the second tower collapse what, what is going through your mind now do you feel like you're in shock uh, do you feel a little well yeah obviously in shock when the second plane hit um, obviously you start to realize that it's some kind of plot or some kind of attack against the United States. But when the first plane hit, you tend to think it's just a random act. You know, obviously a pretty incredible random act. But when the second one hit, then you pretty much go through your mind that we're under attack. But then you hear that uh, car, car went off in the state building, Pentagon got attacked, so pretty organized. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Mark, for joining us live. Obviously, a lot of people from downtown are slowly making their way uptown as people try and escape the scenario and the scene and the chaos that is incurring in lower Manhattan. Once again, this has been a familiar scene all down 2nd Avenue. We want to give you some perspective. Uh, if you can look over here on the corner of 2nd Avenue and 42nd Street, the building that this ambulance is passing right now, that is the Israeli consulate. Obviously, the Israeli consulate has uh, heightened its security force outside. They have already closed two lanes on 2nd Avenue. And over here, you can see uh, that uh, they have closed down part of the way uh, to the UN as well. A lot of people asking questions, trying to figure out uh, what is going on. We've been actually, actually trying to tell people that um, train service as well as buses, all the tunnels and bridges are closed. We're going to try and find some other people here uh, if we could. Ma'am, uh, are you aware of what's going on? Or I don't know. I, I just remember. Okay. Ma'am, are you guys are you aware of what's going on? Uh, have you been evacuated from your building? I'm not dead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of people are trying to get in touch with their loved ones to tell them that they are okay. As many people, as you can see, are getting on their cell phones. And once again, this is a very familiar scene, people waiting online. Uh, Ma'am, were you uh, evacuated from your building? Uh, no, not yet, actually. Yeah. Obviously, you are in a moment here as people kind of collect their thoughts as to what's happening uh, today. A lot of people unclear, praying for their loved ones. Can you, can you just tell me uh, what's going through your mind right now? Um, right now, I'm just calm. I'm really calm right you, now. You um, I just say a prayer. You leave it in the Lord's hands. That's all you can do right now. Are you trying to get in touch with your loved one? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I will leave it at that. A lot of people um, keeping faith, keeping with their faith, and keeping strong. And of course, we'll give you the very latest. So, Jim and Lynn, back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Sukanya. Uh, let's sum up. Uh, what has taken place so far this morning, in case you haven't heard. It all began just before 9 o'clock this morning at the World Trade Center. We're going to take a look at the tape from this morning. Actually, one plane was hit just before 9. Just after 9, a plane hijacked from Newark Airport crashed, you'll see here, through the back of Tower 1 of the World Trade Center. These are apparently hijacked planes. The first one from Boston, the second one from Newark. About an hour after that, that tower... Tower number one collapsed to the ground. At this point, only one 
of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center is still standing. But even as the hour went by, people saw it beginning to lean, beginning to buckle. And about 20 minutes ago, the second World Trade Center tower collapsed to the ground. That's the view live now from Lower Manhattan, no longer, of course, distinguished uh, as it has been for the past 30 years by those giant Trade Center towers, a symbol around the world, a symbol of New York's and America's commerce and economic power, now gone in Lower Manhattan, a wash in smoke and dust and debris and thousands of sad and tragic stories that we will be learning about in the hours and the days ahead. We also want to mention one other thing here about the primary election. This is primary election day, uh, which seems almost a, uh, a trite notion at this time, but uh, we do want to tell you that the primary election, I'm sure this is unprecedented in New York history, has been called off. A number of people, of course, would have voted earlier in the day, but the election has been called off. The, what the mechanics of this will be in terms of rescheduling another one one can uh, only guess, but that is another subject for another day. But we do want to tell you that if you were planning to go to your poll today and vote, all the polls have been closed. The election has been postponed. No voting today. Another item. A large plane crashed just north of the Somerset County Airport. That's about 80 miles uh, north of Pittsburgh. Told it is a Boeing 767. We don't have any more word on what that is or what reason that plane was crashed in that place. You're looking out at the Pentagon, where about an hour and a half ago, a plane was crashed into the center of the America's military might. A serious fire, serious damage resulting there. We don't know what the casualties are there as well. A car bomb went off at the State Department earlier today as well. In short, the northeastern part of the U.S. is under terrorist attack. I'm joined now by my colleague, Kari Tong, who uh, has joined us and learned about this in much the same way as everybody else has. Tell me your, your, your thoughts this morning, Kari. I don't mind telling you that I'm shaky right now. Um, my son uh, goes to school in that area, and for the last hour, of course, I've been trying to contact him in the school. There's been no answer because, as we all know now, the cell phones are not working. Um, I. I'm horrified. I, I'm stunned. I can't believe that I'm even looking at what we're looking at right now. When I got out on 6th Avenue, there were hordes of people in the street, gathered on the sidewalk, total chaos. None of the cabs uh, would take any passengers. They were all filled. I actually had to ask somebody at a stoplight, a nice man. I said, excuse me, I must get to work. Could you take me? He said, no problem. Gregory Jarvis is his name. I thank you. I jumped in there, but it took us forever because the streets were jammed. Traffic is and jammed. while we were on 6th Avenue, we, looked, we heard this giant gasp from the crowds on the street. And we looked behind us, and sure enough, that was when we saw the second tower come down. I actually watched this in total disbelief come crumbling down. And I, as you can hear my voice, I am shaking and um, trying to just uh, pull myself together. I'm worried about my my little boy and yes uh, all of our viewers uh, certainly must understand that we we live here too uh, with our families this is a uh, a tragedy that is going to touch uh, many if not most lives of, uh, of people in this city and it's an adjustment that that, uh, that we're having to make too just to ex kind of accept the reality of this and uh, and pass along to you what uh, what is going on what is going on is as you look at lower manhattan is that the world trade center is gone destroyed by two jetliners hijacked and crashed each one into one of the World Trade Center towers. Uh, we want to reiterate that uh, the primary election, which was to be held today, has been called off. You mentioned that just earlier uh, because of what has happened today. And um, this is, I'm uh, looking at this picture right now and seeing those, the billows of smoke and where two towers once stood just an hour ago, two hours ago, and now no longer exist. The people who are, I, I suppose, on the, we weren't able to get close enough to see what was going on on the ground. No, nobody can yet. But uh, certainly, you have to think that the scenario of the buildings collapsing, although the, the, the anti-terrorism police and the security police and the emergency management people are the best in the world here in New York City. And, uh, and one can only hope that there was time to get the people not only out of the building, but away uh, from the building as well before the collapse came. 
Having said that, we still don't know how many people were killed in simply the impact itself or on board the planes. The 767 that was hijacked from Boston that crashed first, we, we have no word yet on, uh, on what was on that plane, but one can only assume that on a, a morning flight, on a, uh, on a Tuesday morning, that it was, uh, that it was filled with, with travelers. We have an eyewitness on the phone with us right now. His name is Jeremy Fox. Jeremy, can you hear me? I can hear you. Tell me where you were and what you saw when this happened. I was uh, in bed, and then the uh, when the first explosion happened, and it rattled my apartment. Hold on, let me put my TV on mute. Um, and then um, I got out of bed, and I heard a lot of alarm, uh, ambulances and sirens, and I went onto my terrace, and uh, I live east of the Twin Towers, and I saw the explosion of the second plane. I couldn't see the second plane coming in. And here's a look at that second plane hitting tower number one. Yeah, I saw that exact. And it was horrific, and it was a firebomb. I took pictures of it. And then um, I called all my friends to make sure they're okay. And then I was sitting out watching, I was on my terrace watching, you know, the fire and the horror and the ambulances downstairs because I'm I looked down onto the emergency room of uh, Beekman Hospital, NYU Downtown Hospital, and um, as I was watching, the, the second, the left building without the tower, without the satellite tower, blew. All right, and Jeremy, hold that thought for just sure. one moment. We're going to go back outside here to uh, 42nd Street, to Kanye Christian, uh, with someone who was close to the action. Uh, Ron, uh, Ron and Santa, as a matter of fact, it appears to me. That's right, Jim. Uh, I'm with uh, Ron and Santa. Ron, obviously, you're making the trek f from the World Trade Center. Can you just... Tell us, where were you when this happened, sir? Well, I was uh, fairly close to the building, actually. I was going, I was on my way to cover the event for CNBC, and as we were walking across to try to get to the West Side Highway where we thought our trucks were, the South uh, Tower started to collapse, and we were fairly close to it, and it started to rain down debris. My cameraman and I ran, and uh, I ditched around a corner, and there was just debris falling everywhere till it was pitch black, and you couldn't breathe. I ducked into a car and stayed there till it just got light enough to get into a building. And then we stayed in there and then hooked up with some police and drove up here. It was, it was as bad a thing as I could have imagined. I mean, I, honestly, I thought I was going to die in the car because it was, wasn't getting any lighter. Can, can you just tell me what was the scene like outside when you were able to emerge from the car? What were you able to see? You're obviously covered in thick uh, soot. Well, it was, I mean, if you've seen movies about a nuclear winter, that's kind of what it looked like. I mean, there was, it was a, a deep gray haze with just a few blinking lights that you could see on police cars and maybe some small lights coming in from uh, coming out from the inside of buildings but uh, uh, you couldn't see much and we, we just stayed in the building for a little while and then caught up with a couple of police officers were you down there where the second tower went down at all or no, at that we time were, where you were able to get out I, we I don't know if I was because I don't know what time that happened um, we were inside a building that was probably about three or four blocks away and uh, then we just worked our way around the south side of the island with a couple of policemen and we picked up some injured people on the way up and dropped them off at, uh, at the hospital. Tell us about the injured people. I mean, what were you able to see? I mean, were there people lining uh, the sidewalks? I mean, how, there were some how people, severe? Well, uh, the injuries that I saw were not terribly severe. There were some bloodied people. The, the policeman that we picked up had a deep gash in his forehead. Uh, one woman that we also picked up, uh, that the police officer picked up actually, had, a, uh, had shrapnel in her arm. She didn't know what from. Ron, when you made your way up here, do you think people are aware of what exactly is happening here today? I, I think, you know, the early reports were fairly comprehensive uh, about the various activities that are going on elsewhere around the country as well. And I think as we walked up here, most people kind of were fairly well uh, apprised of the situation. Now, as for what else is going on, I, I think, you know, it's kind of hard to get in touch at the moment. All right. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we're glad that you're doing well. Uh, Ron Insana of CNBC, he was obviously down there at the World Trade Center. You could see by the way he looked, obviously, he was there when the first tower went off. He recounted for us that he had to almost duck into a car uh, to catch his breath and to, uh, uh, to stay alive. He said that if he didn't get that car, that he wouldn't. Obviously, you can see a lot of people kind of surrounding here, a lot of people just uh, walking around uh, unaware of what's really going on. Um, Ma'am, do you know what's going on? Or where are you headed to? Uh, no. Yeah. Sir, were you evacuated from your building? Yeah, we were in the United Nations. Yes. We have been evacuated. Can you tell us what they're saying to you at the United Nations? They say that the essential, the essential staff uh, could stay, okay. but all the people who were not essential, that didn't belong to the Security Council, had to leave. All right, thank you. Uh, just to give you an idea, Kaidi and Jim, uh, just take a look at uh, Second Avenue over here. It's pretty much turned into a pedestrian mall as uh, pedestrians are pretty much taking over the street as people are just trying to find a place to go. A lot of people have been uh, asking questions as 
Are the trains working? Yes, uh, Sikandi, are the Sikandi, I, working? I would say that a lot of people's concern at this point is now, even though it's not even noon yet, is how are they going to get home tonight? Right, how because they get it, out it, of the it city. appears there's no way to get out of the city at this point. There, there appears there is no way out of the city. Uh, if you can come over here, this is a scene that we're seeing over and over again. We don't want to intrude on their space, but obviously a lot of people emotional here, uh, taking a moment, uh, trying to realize the uh, the gravity of this situation. Uh, people uh, kind of holding on to each other and trying to come to grips. Also, take a look at this, uh, the phone line, Jim. We've been showing you this again and again all morning. Uh, people uh, trying to call their loved one, people trying to say that they are okay, that they are alive, and that they are staying put. Also, we want to show you over here, this is the Israeli consulate for a lot of people. And of course, uh, there's heightened security over here. And also, pass this way. Um, you can see uh, that that is the way to uh, the United Nations, and, and, and the roadways are completely closed as, as police. I think we just lost the Kanye there, the signal. Okay. okay. Um, th 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 you brought up a very good point because people this time are trying to find some way of getting home. The trains have stopped. Uh, the, of course, all the airports right. have been closed. Uh, I understand that City Hall has been evacuated. And we hear that in Brooklyn, they're getting um, dust and debris falling on them as far away as Brooklyn. Yes, uh, I, I, I wish that we could tell you more. Uh, you're looking at a live picture now from uh, Washington, D.C. That, that, once again, that is the Pentagon. Still uh, fire burning there after uh, reportedly a plane crashed into the Pentagon uh, as well this morning, shortly after the uh, impacts on the World Trade Center. We wish I could tell you more about uh, transportation issues right now, but uh, obviously with the uh, life-saving efforts that must be going on in Lower Manhattan, that uh, has been pushed a bit down uh, on the priority list. And uh, I think the best thing that we can do for residents and commuters alike is to first get out of uh, Lower Manhattan or stay in your homes where it's safe and, uh, and uh, just try to hunker down and, um, and uh, deal with this as best you can. It's going to be impacting our lives here for, for many days to come. Yes, it certainly is not a normal day in any way to, to speak of. And uh, we just were told that the Yankee uh, game has been postponed. That was scheduled for tonight. Obviously, no one's going to be in any mood to celebrate or to play. No, and Baseball. I think that that's probably a security precaution as well, Kaidi. Exactly. Uh, the last thing that, uh, OK, t there, there's a, uh, the last thing um, that, uh, that the government, that, uh, that uh, um, emergency management people want right now large is large group of groups of together. people gathered in one place. Exactly. Uh, so that's not going to happen. Summing up, once again, uh, if in case you just happen to be joining us or have heard something going on and want to, want to, want to get the latest, the latest is that the World Trade Center is gone. Um, each of the towers struck by a hijacked jetliner this morning, one just before 9 o'clock, one just after 9 o'clock. The plane that was struck by the second plane, or the tower that was struck by the second plane, tower number one collapsed first. Here comes the second plane. You see the, you see the, uh, the gaping wound from the first plane near the top. Here comes the second plane, reportedly hijacked from Newark Airport, directly Hitting. into the building, virtually coming through, through it. Mm. the other side. About a half hour to 40 minutes later, the building just could not take it structurally and collapsed in a huge plume of smoke and debris. And about 20 minutes to a half hour after that, the second tower collapsed. You saw a glimpse of the, uh, one of the communications antennas on top dropping into the smoke. It's impossible even to think about the carnage and chaos that is going on right there. Well, and all the people who are working that building, all the... the government buildings, well, certainly, the government uh, exactly. offices, and the restaurants. And certainly what we don't know is uh, what kind of, of evacuation procedures, what kind of haste they were able to make with their evacuation procedures after the initial hit. Exactly. Um, certainly the prayers are going out that, uh, that everyone in the buildings was able to get out, but then you start thinking that it was only 20, 25 more minutes and another 35, 40 more minutes before the tower collapsed. How much could be done uh, in such a huge building? These are all things we're... Uh, we're going to have to learn. And there's another view of the collapse, a little closer. I, this is at street level. You're seeing the debris just pouring down on the street. And again, we don't know what the extent of the casualties could be. This is the first, is tower, the first collapse. tower collapse. And you see down on the street, of course, emergency personnel. Already in place. We are getting our security procedures for here at the Daily News.